and then hit the record too. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Salt Lake City, Utah, and the Utah Ice Sheet for University of Utah Hockey tonight. It's the final game of the 2018 calendar year, the final meeting between the University of Utah Skating Newts and the Utah State Aggies on Teddy Bear Night. And as we bring it to you here live on our YouTube page, good evening, everybody. Matt Coma alongside Ryan Jones. Reese Jensen will join us later on in the program, and Jonesy, Final game of the calendar year against a heated rival in the Utah State Aggies. You know when these two teams get together, it's always going to be a fantastic one. Yeah, it's always one of my favorite games to play in as a player. Um, as a spectator, it's always a great time. Uh, the fans seem to really bring it and feel the energy. And, you know, typically when the Utes and Aggies uh, meet in this rivalry, it's an absolute bloodbath. I mean, we saw that during the first meeting, uh, which was here in Salt Lake, the Utes took that game six to nothing and then last night in the rematch Utes came away with a close win it was three to two and it was just filled with penalties as most of these games always are but look forward to night three and hope that the Utes can complete that uh that first semester sweep yep so we'll see the third and final meeting between these two in-state rivals Utah two and oh so far as Jonesy just mentioned with the two wins, one here in Salt Lake and one up in Logan last night as the Utes make their way out onto the ice. Our starting lineups and national anthem just moments away here. Uh, just before we get going here, Jonesy, it is the final game of the calendar year here. Uh, a somewhat up and down first half for Utah. They started really well out of the gates. They were ranked in the top 25 for a couple of weeks, but now the injuries have kind of hit and Utah is still trying to find its identity a little bit here. Yeah, and I think that there's a lot of bright spots to look forward to. I think Coach Harris has done a great job in recruiting. They have a stellar freshman class, or I should say rookie class this year. And uh, I, I have key injuries to a lot of really, really talented players has kind of forced these guys to step up, and they've really done a great job at that. Um, good wins against UNLV, a great win on the road against Minot, which got them ranked. And I think it kind of puts them in the national conversation as a team to look out for. And, you know, I think a good win here tonight. They'll roll into the uh, second semester feeling pretty confident about it. And hopefully that, uh, that long break will allow for some guys to kind of heal up those bumps and bruises and get back out on the ice. All right. Well, it's time for our starting lineups and national anthem. We'll send it downstairs. Public address announcer Justin Long with our starting lineups and tonight's national anthem.
All right, hockey fans getting ready for in-state Utah rivalry hockey tonight. Utah and Utah State. Matt Coma, Ryan Jones, Reese Jensen up here in the broadcast booth tonight. Just in case you didn't hear it, here are tonight's starting lineups. First for the Utah State Aggies on defense will be number 20, Chase Ball, and number, uh, number 17, Gavin Lubin. Forward line, Drew Decker, Chris Cutshaw, and Thomas Machunas. In goal is Ethan Weiss. He gets the uh, the start over Coulter Pritchard, who was in net last night for the Aggies. As for the Utes tonight, Darren Banks, Owen Lieberknight, and Joshua Navarre is lining out the forward line for the Utes. Giovanni Bastone and Brett Meyer on the defense. Patrick Casper will be in between the pipes tonight for the University of Utah. It's teddy bear toss game tonight. If the Utes, when the Utes score the first goal tonight, a bunch of fans have brought in the stuffed animals. will be donated to Primary Children's Hospital tonight. And boys, it's gonna be a fun one here tonight. Yeah, I'm super excited about this game tonight. It's gonna to be, like we, like we were saying in the introduction, it's gonna be a spirited affair. I'm excited to see uh, the Utes kind of leave it all out on the uh, ice sheet tonight, right before they're heading off for the semester, so. So teams meet at center ice. Puck drop, we're underway from Salt Lake City, Utah, winning the opening draw straight forward. Darren Banks into the zone. We'll look tonight to see who will be Mr. Teddy Bear for Utah, join the other five Skating Utes that have etched their name into Utah hockey history. We'll talk about that as the night progresses as well. As Utah has it in her own end. Over, Owen Lieberknight looking for Bess, or excuse me, Navarez into the offensive zone. Now Lieberknight gets it back, being pressured down low by number 15, Trace Farr. Over on the far side, Aggies clip it off the high off the glass and they'll chase after it. First one there is the Utes. Near side taking a stumble is Banks. Now for the red line here, gets the puck back to him. Utes tag up on the delayed offside. And now the Aggies control. Chase ball, center pass off the stick of Machunas, back into the Utah end. Steven Paolo able to shoulder off his man down low. Now it's a tangle up. It's down low battling with Dagan Walton. Now it's still loose. Walton trying to bring it towards the front of the cage. Utah defense says no. And it's brought back out by the Utes. Zachary Jerome up the far side. He'll bring it towards the center of the zone. He'll fire a shot. It's flipped up and out of play for our first whistle of the night. Yeah, you should see a lot of speed coming from this line tonight. Zach Jerome, Wyatt Light, and Connor Meany, uh, three of the fastest guys on Utah. And you'll look to see him work wide, uh, send pucks to the net, and hopefully score a few goals. Face off here on the near side. Jerome takes the draw for Utah, but it's won by the Utah State Aggies and cleared out of the zone. David Barnes going D to D to Brett Meyer, sends it hard around the boards. Back out is Weiss, able to hold, settle it down. Now calmly makes a backhanded pass, but it's stolen away by Utah. Light looking towards Barnes in the center of the zone. Excuse me, that's Connor Meany looking for that puck in the slot. Now Wyatt Light gets it back on the far side. Had an assist last night against the Aggies up in Logan. Passes it to Meany near side. Holding in the corner. Sends a pass towards the slots. Nobody there in white. Picked up by Dagan Walton, holding off Jerome, who takes a deflection off of Lallier's uh, stick. As the Aggies get their line changed, this ended in here to the near side. I like the possession, puck possession down in the offensive zone for the Utes. Uh, if I recall from the first meeting here, Utah State with a smaller bench tonight means a lot of tired legs and overall in that first matchup that the Utes won just tired legs out there for the Utah State Aggies on being unable to change in their own zone. That goes all the way down for icing with 17.41 to go here in our opening period. Matt Coma, Ryan Jones, Reese Jensen joining you here tonight for the final game of the first semester. Utah won't be back in uniform until the middle of January. As we'll have an offensive draw here. Fornelius goes against Brandon Blauer for this face off on the far side. Teams battle for it, now it's sent to the far corner. Aggies try to clear the zone, it's kept in by Paolo. Sends it down here to the near side. Ball had his pocket picked. Brandon Blauer able to help out his teammate, goes D to D to the far side. Now here comes number 15, Trace Farr. Time to skate it up the near side, looking over his options, finds Fernandez, just taps it along looking for Blauer. Fornelius able to steal it away and send it back in. Good four check here from the Utes to start. Yeah, you'll see, this is a different line from last night. Last night, uh, Nick Fornelius started on the wing for the uh, for the first line and get a little chemistry going to switch it up a little bit. He's now playing center tonight, and you'll see uh, 
they actually switched him in, in the third period yesterday and things started to turn around and the youths took the lead. So, uh, you know, keep it that way, keep the momentum going and see Fornelius working hard in the center. Aggies trying to send it towards the front of the cage, towards Casper, takes a deflection here to the near side. Owen Liebernight gets it back out to neutral ice. Teams battle back and forth, past the Utah State blue line. Now Liebernight into the zone, backhand pass, stolen away by Utah State. Josh kirk Felique just chips it off the boards just out of the zone. Brett Meyer will escort that puck down into the far corner. Back to the top of the point, Meyer. He'll try to fire a shot, didn't get a whole lot of stick on it. Now here come the Aggies. Two on two, they'll fire it in from the blue line. First save of the night for Patrick Casper off his blogger. Quick regroup here from Utah as Owen Liebernight leaves it for Banks. He'll skate it along into the offensive zone. Banks, top of the slot, he'll fire a shot. Weiss makes the save. Big hit over on the far side. Good job by number 28. That's Nicholas Rodin with the collision on the far side. And Ute uh, goes down. No call from either side, but we play on. And uh, this, is the, this is the first shift that fourth line has seen all weekend. And you see you know, a big energy line come out, play the body, two big hits. And uh, now they're going to the net, too. And log jam right in front of the blue paint is... That was Zachary Jerome that had a chance. Now Paolo from the top of the point fires a shot. It's wide and out of play. Faceoff will come outside the zone, looks like, with 15.31 to go. I think that was a good, good energy shift by those guys, as you're saying. First shift of the weekend for them, so clearly they're well rested. And, you know, Rodine right there looking like a man on the mission just to put, put a hat on somebody. It was an ex yeah, excellent check. As that puck did take a deflection, so it stays in the zone. Back to Paolo. This time a wrist shot takes a deflection. Might have gotten a piece of Weiss. As back is far for Utah State. Leaves it behind, picking up Chase Ball. Surveys his options in his own end. Still looking as he finally brings it out to neutral ice. Now winds up from the red line and easily shrugged off by Casper. That was really the only shot that he was going to get there. Utes doing a nice job of staying in position, forcing that shot from a pretty tough angle. Aggies trying to regroup here as Drew Decker holds in the neutral zone, passes off target. It's going to come back to the Utah defense. Connor Meany back there at the moment for Utah. As he'll skate it along with speed, past the red line, now gains the blue. Near side, into the near corner, comes out in front, try to send it, but a good collision there. So that was number 11, Robert Decay with a good check. Or excuse me, number 17, that's Gavin Lubin with the good play, the defenseman from Utah State. We've been looking for the home run pass. Goes off the stick of Blauer. No icing. Oh, it actually does go off. Doesn't connect with that pass. So it's icing on Utah State. Five minutes and change gone here first period. Still looking for our first goal, though, between these two in-state teams. It's always kind of nice on Teddy Bear, Teddy Bear Toss night, though. You want to be patient because you don't want to score too quickly. We want to see how many teddy bears that this full stadium can actually get onto the ice. Well, that's what we ran into two years ago, the Utes and the Cougars battling on teddy bear toss night. David Barnes scored 53 seconds in. The team's were, fans were still coming in the door as the teddy bears started to rain out onto the ice. That was two years ago. Barnes, one of the five that have unleashed the teddy bears onto the ice. Colby Birch last season had that honor against his Utah State Club. Back on Teddy Bear Toss Night in 2017. Teams battling for it. Utah State is offside, and we'll get a whistle here with 13.58 to go. I'll pose this question to both of you guys. Who has the upper hand here? We're about six minutes in. Both teams still trying to figure it out, or do you see an advantage either way? Um, well, as you can see, Utah, uh, the Utes are coming out very fast tonight. And uh, last night, it was a little bit of a blue-collar game. You could see kind of shoots and ladders climbing up, and then you know, momentum will shift backwards, but I'd say so far tonight, Utah's got the upper hand, but uh, Utah State's one of those one of those Utah teams that comes out, they never stop battling, and you know, even if you score three, they'll come back in the third and they'll battle just as hard as they did the first five minutes of the game. Aggies trying to get some offensive presence here as they send it into the Utah end. The Utes quickly are out the other way, though. Here comes Zachary Jerome, has Wyatt with him, but the, lost the handle on, that's offside. Thought a little bit too much about that pass there as he had whites or light streaking towards the back post. Yeah, that always happened to me as a player. You know, I get a decent amount of speed and then just realize I forgot one thing, and that <laughs> typically was the most important thing being the puck. Always want to bring that over the, the blue line. 
you usually want to want to get it over the line before you make that move. You Correct. Learn that as as low as squirts, I think nowadays. Yeah. Oh, if you're going, coming in with speed, just enter with speed and you know try to make the fancy pass or play later. But it happens to everybody. Machunas sends it in for Utah State. Casper uh, fumbles it in front. Oh, it goes off the post. Should have been 1-0 Utah State, but it goes off the iron. And here comes Utah the other way. Jerome lost the handle on it. Clear knocked out. Here to the near side. Machunas ahead for Cutshaw. He'll fire a shot. Casper turns it aside. Almost danger there for Utah. You see that a lot out of Casper. He's an aggressive goaltender. He's always wanted to play the puck. And, you know, sometimes that could come back to bite him. And, Thankfully, we're uh, bailed out there and still 0-0. So Wyatt Light will send it down low. Pass from Meany looking for a shot. Now save Weiss loose in front, and Weiss able to cover up. And hold on to that puck. Good offensive opportunity. The best one of the night for Utah. That was a fantastic save there. He had a decent amount of traffic. I'm not sure if uh, how Weiss was able to see that puck. And I'm not sure if that chance by Utah State was off the post or if it was off a stick or both, but one of the Utah defensemen was back there with a the stick in front, and it might have been a deflection that just saved that goal. It's back to work here. Paolo shot redirected just wide as the Aggies will break it out. Up the near side, Lallier. First-year player for the Aggies looking for something in front. Has it stolen away by David Barnes. Now he's got room to skate it up the far side. Barnes past the red line, now the blue. Has attackers coming with as it fires a shot. It's an easy glove save for Ethan Weiss. Yeah, Utah State giving uh, David Barnes a lot of real estate there. Unfortunately, just found the leather of Weiss and no big rebound for the other Utah uh, forwards coming in with them. Ethan Weiss, actually the better, a little bit better of numbers than Coulter Pritchard, who has seen most of the time so far this year. He's 2-2 two two on the season, a 3.49 goals allowed average, but only an 87% save percentage. That one, Pritchard's got to beat by about, about uh, 2%. It's in their own end. They'll break the puck out. Owen Liebernight leads the charge up the far side. Past the blue line, skits it past... One of the Aggies over in the corner, now top of the point, unable to get to it in time was Bastone, and he's forced to go all the way back. Casper wants a quick restart, but he ices the puck the other way, but it takes a bounce off the referee, and it gates the icing call as Navarez had an opportunity that was turned aside by the Aggies. Navarez has had quite a few chances throughout the weekend, and, uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if he buries a couple of them tonight. Puck loose here on the near side. Owen Liebernight back for the Utes. Nice little move at the red line, and he'll chip it all the way down. Outlet pass looking for Brett Fernandez off of his stick. Now to Meyer. Looks to wheel around the center circle. Just chip, chips it in. Thought better of it. He'll go back and change. His back is far. Pass here to the near side. As Doyle will... Passing along, Fernandez looking for the center press. Hops right to Machunas, who fires a shot just wide. Puck loose on the far post. Now it's picked up by Utah. And again, here they come with speed. This time, Wyatt Light brings it ahead. Passes it along. Looks for Jerome. Backhand off the side of the net. Great sauce pass there, entering the zone to create that chance. Top of the point, Audlin couldn't fire it through traffic. It's blocked by Fernandez. He's shaking up, goes quickly to the bench. And as Brandon Blower comes in one on four. Stops at the top of the point, brings it down to the hash marks, looks for something in front, has Decker who fires a shot, it's blocked by Meany. Two on one battle in the near corner. Puck comes out, Wyatt Light gets a stick on it, tried to shuffle it along for Meany, now he'll bring it ahead himself. Light tries to give it to Meany, it's loose here on the near side as Meany zigged where he might have been able to zag. Rest of the line will change though. Aggies D to D in their own end. Pass up the far boards, and here come the Aggies in the neutral zone. Chip down low, Cutshaw will go after it. Took an interesting route to that puck, allowing the youths to get to it first as Meyer trying to get through a couple of stumbles here from, that's number 16, that's Colin Kinslow, and it's a fired shot from Urch is stopped by Weiss. Now Paolo will take a drive, and finally things settle down after Weiss makes a glove save. We were talking pregame, you know, no love lost between these two teams when they meet up. There's been some big hits tonight, but a very surprising thing for me, at least, 
we've made it halfway through the first period without any penalties. So overall, a pretty clean game so far. It'll be interesting to see how long that lasts. Yeah, and uh, penalties have been an issue for the Utes all season. And Coach uh, Coach Brett Harris has been talking about it the entire year. You know, discipline, discipline, discipline. And since uh, since a few weeks ago, it's been preached every practice and every day. And and you saw it yesterday. I mean, it was a it was a relatively clean game yesterday as well. Yeah, only five penalties in the game last night. Something you rarely see in a game like with two, these two teams as Weiss thinks better of playing that puck and gets another face off here. Utah State not a stranger to taking penalties either. Chase Ball, one of the defensemen for Utah State, 70 penalty minutes already in the season. That's eighth most in Division Two out of the what, 100 and some odd teams in Division Two. He's eighth in the country in penalty minutes. Yeah, both these teams no stranger to the box. Uh, looking at the stats here, Utah spending an average of 16 minutes and the Aggies spending a full period, 21 minutes in the box per game. So it's easy to say it's a little surprising. No one's made a trip yet, knock on wood, as we continue on here with about nine minutes and 20 seconds in the first period. Utes in the zone. Here is Navarez looking for something on the back door. No one home for Utah as they just ring it around the boards. Now the Aggies have an opportunity to break the puck out. Looking for Lallier near side, but the pass off target. Utah tries to send it in, but Barnes hits it right into the shin pads of Navarez, and it's offside on Utah. Nine oh four to go, first period, still no score. Utah, Utah State here on a Saturday night, Teddy Bear Toss Night, sixth annual event for the University of Utah. Shots nine to four in favor of the Utes. As we're back underway, puck loose here on the near side. Both teams hack at it. It's back out to center ice. Hunter Doyle quickly across to far. Nice pass finds Blauer. He'll come to the top of the slot. A shot it's saved by Casper, picked up by Utah. And you're already seeing a change of lines here from the Utes. Uh, Nick Rodine, who started, who started on the fourth line, moved up and was on the second line on the wing last shift. And right now you have number 28, Howie Rockhill, who's playing on the second line this shift. So a lot of change. I'm interested to see if there's something going on with an injury maybe on the bench because this, uh, this is not normal from the Utes. Well, keep an eye on it as the game progresses here is... Head coach Brett Hurst changing up the lines just a little bit here as Lieber Knight gets caught in the middle of a change here. No too many men on the ice penalty coming for Utah as no one touched it. So they'll go D to D in their own end. Forward line in the middle of a change. Now Urch will bring it along for Utah. Into the offensive zone. Has it poked away, but not out of the zone. Hunter brings it down low. Urch trying to help it along as well. It's stolen away by Chris Cutshaw. And it's back to the Aggies. Gaining it along, gaining the red line. Only gets it to Barnes, though. It's going to come right back to him. He has no idea where it is. And finally able to find that puck. Aggie still hold the zone. The shot goes wide. Meyer with time here on the near side. Seven and a half minutes to go in a scoreless first period. Barnes still looking for someone to pass through. Just floats it out to neutral ice where the Aggies are waiting. Now McCackney will... Ringing around the boards. Aggies now in the middle of the change as Kirk Felique gets a stick on it. Now McCackney pass in front, stolen away by Meyer. Now he breaks it out four on two comes Utah. Meyer into the zone, has Fornelius with him as he fires his shot. It's turned aside by Weiss. Like that move by Meyer, a little fake slap and then nice little toe drag to create some space and get the shot opportunity. Stoppage of play as Casper gloves that one down. 7 0 3 now remains here in the first period. Utah. Records its 10th shot of the evening. They lead the shot count 10 to five, but still no goals. Face off on the far side. Banks will go against Lallier. Yeah, you gotta imagine that this Utah bench right now is just itching for someone to get a goal. Everybody wants it to be him. You know, so you get all that, the Instagram cloud of posting the picture of all the teddy bears coming down after your goal. Yeah, Utah. Has five players that have had that. I'll mention that here in just a second. As Utes trying to get it out of their own end is now it's getting up the far side. C.J. Odlin gains the red line. Had it lost for a minute. One of the Aggies blows a tire into the referee, allowing him a little more space. Now it's a two-on-two -two battle behind the cage. Picked up by the Aggies. 
Floated pass, doesn't have a lot of weight on it. Paolo lost it for a second. Now it's back to Owen Liebernight. Liebernight near side, tries to come towards the front, stolen away by the Aggies. Three blue shirts waiting for him there. And now here comes Utah State. Cutshaw looking for Walton, but off of his skate. Back to Utah. Paolo has, oh, he had Navarez wide open, but the pass too far. And it's icing on the Utes. Yeah, number 12 for Utah State, Chris Cutshaw. One of the faster players in uh, ACHA Division II for sure. He, uh, he has very quick feet, very good acceleration, and moves very well. And it's, it's worked out for him well this season. Uh, quite a few goals. Yep. Chris Cutshaw, one of the leaders for goals here for Utah State, with seven on the campaign so far, one of the team captains as well. As the Utes trying to clear the zone here on the near side, Gavin Lubin says no, sends it back in, back behind the Utah cage. Now Decker, top of the point. Shot through traffic, Casper makes a save, it's loose here on the near side as Banks and, Coop and Kirk League were tied up. Utes able to get it out, Lieber Knight will just tap it along and negate the icing, but the Aggies will skate along tons of time here for Doyle. He'll gain the red line, floats it into Casper, he'll want to play it, and he does. Barnes sidesteps a Decker check, but lost his footing at the last minute. Now back behind. Barnes quickly back over. Wyatt Light looking for somewhere to give it to him. Now he leaves it. Aggie, or the Utes, here they come. Jerome up the near side. Jerome trying to get the corner. Instead goes behind the net. Surveys his options, comes in front. A shot, it's blocked, still loose. And over to the far boards. Light back and forth he goes. It's the Utes set him in the offensive zone. Light fires a shot, deflected wide. Here on the near side, two Utes pursue. Meany down low for Jerome. Has it stolen away by Blauer. So he tries to come up the far side, poked away by Jerome, but right to a waiting wing for the Aggies. This is offside, though. Utes will tag out. High floated pass into the neutral zone. Meany gloves it down, battling with Blauer, a battle of the sixes. As now Meyer. Gains the blue line. Nice little stick move. Now the top of the circle fires a shot. It's just over the bar. Utes still buzzing, though. Here comes Light. Down low for Nelius. Holds it in the corner. Gives it for Meany. Gets by a stick check. Brings it back behind. Finds Light. Still looking for something in front, though. Light comes out in front. He'll turn around a shot. Low angle opportunity. Takes a deflection off the goaltender. And stays inside the zone for a faceoff. <laughs> really like how this uh, this line's going out there and buzzing right now. They're doing a great job of uh, keeping possession down here in this offensive zone. Would not be surprised if one of those gentlemen end up being our uh, teddy bear toss scorer. But Utah State with some good containment as well. Nothing inside, protecting the house. Yep. And uh, you know some solid defense. Not a lot of good good opportunity shots. A lot of puck possession, but nothing to the front of the net. Everything's been kind of contained to the perimeter so far for Utah. As they try again here, stolen by Lubin, quick outlet pass, now looking for the home run pass off the stick of McKechnie. Utah back in control here. Outlet pass stolen away by McKechnie, he'll send it into the corner. The Aggies will chase after it. Meyer first one there for Utah, chips over the far boards, Hunter gets ran off the puck by Lubin. Comes right back to his feet, takes another check, Another tumble, still trying to play that puck. As McCackney looks for someone to pass to, instead leaves it behind. Decker leads the charge, but it's stolen away as it comes out in front. Here comes Urch. Into the zone, fires a shot just wide. Weiss will play it. Chips it up the near side. Meyer waiting for it. Tries to settle it down. Now pats it down low for Fornelius. Pass in front. Weiss makes a save. It's loose. In front, Hunter scores! Reed Hunter, Mr. Teddy Bear for 2018, and the Utes are on the board, and here come the Bears. Great positioning by uh, Hunter there, just sitting right in the slot. Utes work the puck there, get a good rebound, and uh, just a nice little putback. Couldn't really have been much easier for him, and couldn't have happened to a better guy. So the Teddy Bears, as you see on your screen, fall out onto the ice. The sixth annual teddy bear toss here for Utah as Reed Hunter etches his name into Utah hockey history 
Joining the likes of Colby Birch, David Barnes, Chris York, Michael Ahern, and Douglas Newell. All the former Mr. Teddy Bears here from the University of Utah as the fans throughout the last couple of here. The Crimson Ice are helping out collecting all these bears. These will all be donated to local charities, most of them going up to Primary Children's Hospital just up the road here from the Utah Ice Sheet. And that's what this is all about, boys. This is about a good cause for trying to brighten the Christmas for a, a kid in need here. Uh, all the teddy bears except one because Reed Hunter gets his choice Gets to take one home. That's true. Goal scorer of the game and uh, gets to sleep tight with a teddy bear tonight. And this is just a great hockey tradition um, that's been happening around the country now. You know, more and more teams are starting to do this around Christmas time and just goes to show how, how great hockey fans and families can be when they, they come together for a great cause. Mm -hmm. If you see there about middle of your screen there, Reed Hunter actually helping out collecting the bears here as well. As you've seen, as Jonesy mentioned, just a couple, you've seen this all over the, the country, all over the globe even. You see a couple up in Canada, the Calgary Hitmen always seem to average about 20,000 bears when they do put on this event. It's just a great cause that the hockey community can give back to to either local charities, to some kids that need some, need some help up in the hospital, things like that. But it, overall, it's just a great tradition that the, just the hockey community across the globe has. Yep, one of, uh, one of many, you know, they have Hockey Fights Cancer now. There's quite a bit of support for veterans, uh, military nights across the country. Um, you know, plenty of events for, for local charities like you saw at the beginning. You know, we had a, a young kid out there skating with the Utes, getting his chance to, you know, for the spotlight. And there's a lot of opportunities like that, uh, you know, for every team around the country now. It's, it's great to see that every hockey team is reaching out and, and being a part of their local communities as well as, the, as well as the national community. We want to thank the Utah State fans that made the trip down here as well. They threw out a couple of bears out to help the cause, probably hoping that they were going to get one for Utah State. But uh, we want to thank them for coming down and showing their support. And, and um, as you mentioned, military night up in Utah State last night. A lot of different good causes. I know the Aggies will have their teddy bear toss a little bit later on. And no matter who you root for, red, blue, purple, no matter who you root for, it's a good cause. Yeah, and then last night the Aggies showing their respect with some, some unreal military jerseys with uh, some, you know, fallen veterans and, and family members on the backs, you know, respecting them, paying their paying their respects in, in honor of, you know, the veterans and the people that serve serve this country. So, uh, you know, a great cause yesterday and, and today. And Reed Hunter with his, his first of the year. Yeah, first, first goal of the, of the season for Reed Hunter. He's Mr. Teddy Bear for 2018. As the, all the bears have been cleaned up, we're ready to go back to work here as Utah takes the lead here with 316 to go in the first period. What a first goal of the year, right? Yeah. You know, you get the teddy bear goal. You get your own stuffed animal. What a what more could you ask for? Yeah, great, great goal by Hunters. We get reset here after the break. All right, back underway. Utah leads one nothing now, thanks to the Hunter goal. And there they come, looking for more. Meyer shot through traffic. That gets to Weiss as he's able to turn that one aside. And now here come the Aggies with speed. Chris Cutshaw fires a shot. It's saved by Casper. Still loose back behind. Picked up by Utah. Great save by Casper there, and then the ability to cr control the rebound enough to face that second shot. And the speed by Cutshaw, again, like I mentioned, just so fast out of the gates, and and he can move, and you'll see him tonight create a lot of opportunities. He did the same thing as last night and, and scored one as well. Lieber Knight ends up taking that shot from Meyer in front of the cages. Utah still going to work here as Banks steps it in, and he puts it home! Darren Banks to another in Utah! So I have a question. Does Meyer get an assist off this? Because I do believe that was an intentional pass to the to the uh, end boards there to set that play up. Intentional? I I look pretty intentional <laughs> to me. I'm gonna I'm gonna give my boy the credit there. No, no. Uh, yeah, Meyer Meyer tonight sporting the, uh, the a little bit of a different tape job for what he calls the. Uh, the, it's a mental game tape job. <laughs> uh, you know, you tape your stick in whatever way you can, or you actually, in his case, run out of tape and tape your stick how you can and get a point out of it, too. So it's 2 nothing Utah. Darren Banks with the goal. It's going to be his second of the season. As 
And he does not get the assist. Owen Liebernight, the lone assist on that goal. So, unfortunately, it may have been unintentional, or may have been intentional, but it uh, apparently not intentional enough for the referees to count. As we're back underway, Utah State still looking for that answer. They were able to answer the Utes' first goal last night with a pair of goals in that first period. They are a team that's built to try and respond to someone's goals here. So we'll keep an eye on the Aggies here offensively in the next couple of minutes with two minutes to go in the period. And here's that line again coming with speed. Wyatt Light so fast. One of, one of the fastest guys I've seen come through this program for sure. For sure. Definitely a difference maker is he, Jerome, and Meany out there, the top line for Utah tonight. Jerome tries to come towards the front, stolen away by Kirk Philippe. And he'll play it over the far side. Big hit, and that's the first penalty of the night. Connor Meany heading to the box for that check into the boards. As Weiss goes to the bench, extra attacker here for the Aggies. Lallier loses his edge of the blue line, though, and we'll get our stoppage of play. A boarding call coming up to Connor Meany. And that's one of those ones as a player where when, when you're going into the boards with a guy one-on-one, -on -one, it's kind of a 50-50 puck. You're not sure. You take the body. Maybe you put a little bit too much contact into it, a little bit too much shoulder, and the other guy goes down. It, it looks a little bit worse than it is, but... Uh, you know, you get the unlucky call, and, and it, that's, a, that's, a tough, that's a tough play to read as a player when it's a 50-50 puck like that. Either get in body position, and if you don't try it, have it, try to play the body, and, and that's what Meany did, just hit a little bit too hard. That's always the, the ever-long debate. Do you go for the puck or do you go for the body? Unfortunately, that one goes, uh, goes a little unfortunate for Connor Meany. So it's the first power play of the night for Utah State here with about a minute 20 to go. We're down now to minute 13. So this penalty will carry over to the second period. The Aggies can't score in the next minute eight. Brett Fernandez into the zone, leaves it for Walton. He'll fire a shot and a good glove save from Patrick Casper. His 10th save of the night keeps it 2-0. nothing. Little, little leather from Patty K. Likes, likes to do that in practice to me too. <laughs> I think he likes to do it to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> That's always got to feel great as a goaltender when you can just get that little extra windmill action when you're flashing the glove oh, like yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Face off here on the near side. 104 left in the period. 141 left in the power play, as you see on your screen there. As the Aggies win the draw and go to work here on the power play. Josh Kirk Philippe, top of the point. Gets it right back, fires a shot that's too high. Now it's picked up by Lallier. Now looking for ball, it goes pinballs around back to ball. Now to Kirkfleet, back down low, chase ball, holds at the hash marks, back to Kirkfleet. Thought about a shot, instead comes center, now fires a wrist shot through traffic, never made it to Casper as a couple of players collide in front of Casper, refs say play on, and here comes Banks. In the offensive zone, looking for the shorty, but lost the handle on it. As he trips up Kirkfleet there, a little, just a little jab there enough to up end Kirk Fleek, and it's five on three upcoming here for the Utes. Utes put, put themselves into a hole here um, with Fornelius going to the, or is it Banks, sorry, that's going yeah. to the box. Fornelius is trying to advocate for him. Um, but the Utes so far this year haven't been too affected by all those penalty minutes. They're actually eighth in the uh, ACHA Division I standings uh, in their uh, penalty kill this year. So we'll see what they can do with the five on three. That's, uh, that's, that's one of those soft Utah calls that we see in this, uh, in this barn a lot where uh, it's not really a penalty, but in Utah, it's a penalty. Yeah, so we're five on three for the final 15 seconds of this pe uh, period as Utah State trying to get on the board with a shot that's just over the bar. Now Gavin Lubin down to the final 10 seconds. Fires a shot, tipped in front just wide. That was Blauer on the... Front post, now it's loose near side and they tap it home, it's Drew Decker. Right place, right time, a power play goal and the Aggies score with .6 left in the period. Really unfortunate that the Utes couldn't escape to the intermission without giving one up, but the shot before that just barely went wide off the redirect and you know we saw earlier in the game a, a bad turnover by Casper, had to you know 
be, be bailed out by a sprawling save. I think Utah State was, was bound to get one with the way that yep. they were playing. Puck, puck doesn't lie. Yep. Puck doesn't lie. Yep. So 2-1 will be our score going to the break. One final puck drop just for formalities here as the horn will sound. Doesn't end up sounding, but referees blow a dead anyway. And that'll be it. 20 minutes in the books here from the Utah Ice Sheet. The Utes with a pair of goals. Reed Hunter gets the teddy bear goal. But the Aggies, a late power play goal, makes this a one-goal game going to the next period. We'll take, we'll take a break. We'll step aside uh, in the intermission. Jay uh, Sewell will be around. He'll have a couple of words of wisdom, as he always does on these broadcasts. You'll hear from him in the intermission. But we'll step aside for now. After 20 minutes, it's the Utah Utes 2 and the Utah State Aggies 1. You're watching University of Utah Hockey right here on YouTube. All right, uh, hockey fans, we are here with uh, Morgan Marietta, who is uh, going to be the women's D1 for the ACHA, for the Skate and Youth women's coach. Welcome to the welcome to Utah. Hey, thank you. Thanks. Happy to be here and excited to get the program going. So tell me about, uh, you know, this has been a dream for uh, the programs for a while. Again, can't go to NCAA without a Title IX program. AJ has been after this, so those, those of you who know uh, AJ, the president, uh, how were you contacted? Yeah, so um, I started the Lady Lightning program here in Salt Lake City about 11 years ago. And um, so hockey's always been in my blood. I played since I was five. As soon as I got to that uh, next level, pursued my master's de degree. And the first thing I wanted to do is start a youth program here for girls. And um, there's just no opportunity out west for these girls to play with other female athletes. And so First and foremost, I jumped on the ice and um, got my coaching certifications under my belt mm -hmm. and started the Lady Lightning program here at Steiner Ice Rink. Um, jumping forward about 10 years from that, here we are today. 
um, and looking at the vision of college hockey out west um, and was recruited by AJ and the Skating Utes team um, after all of our efforts here with the youth program that's uh, proudly up and running with both a U12 and a U19 team today. So looking forward to that next level and bringing college hockey out west as well. So what do you see as, as far as opponents are saying when you say bringing hockey out to the west? Uh, what, what do you know of the other programs that are out here? Yeah, so looking at the ACHA Division One level, which we're set to play at, uh, we have a few teams locally in the state of Colorado, um, none within the state of Utah that are at the ACHA Division I level, hoping to add competition to the mix. And then also we have Arizona State University. So our t surrounding neighbors, um, are already making their way into the ACHA Division I. And then we also have um, our partners in the Pac-9 who are extremely interested in bringing women's hockey to their programs as well. And not only to make sure we're complying with Title IX, but also so that we together can move to NCAA um, out west for hockey overall. So starting a program from scratch, I know there's got to be a lot of to-do lists that's got to be several pages long. Uh, what are the top three priorities? Start with number one. What's the biggest thing that you've got to get going between now and uh, training camp in August? Absolutely. Oh, I could I could run the gamut here. But for me, um, first and foremost, it's um, setting my vision for the program and um, going right in line with the, the groundwork that's already been laid for the skating mutes. Um, I love the vision of the program. I love the support of the organization. And overall, I love the team component. So first and foremost, it's me building my team and setting that vision for my staff um, to ensure that we're all on the same page. And going hand in hand, it's, I'd say it's a first and a second, is that recruitment phase of not only getting these athletes enrolled into the amazing uh, school, the University of Utah, and all that it has to offer, but making sure it's a right fit for them academically, and second, that they're a right fit for our program. And um, tenacity is a is a word that describes me at my core, and I really, really am looking for the right athletes who are also going to show that tenacious ability, that grit and determination on and off the ice here through our program. Well, I know when we were at the Nationals last year, the, the D1 women's program, uh, that we saw the hockey, very, very high caliber. And, you know, look at all these girls that are playing in these AAA programs around the world in U19, uh, in all, all around the states, and if you don't get into a D3 or a D1 school, or maybe school is more important than hockey, but hockey is still yeah. on your caliber, um, it, it was fabulous hockey. I mean, the caliber of hockey, uh, some of the benches were short, but the, comp the compete level was top notch. Yeah, absolutely. I too have had um, the ability to get my eyes on some of these D1 ACHA teams, and, and I have the exact same uh, kudos to say to these programs. Not only were the teams coached by female coaches, but they also um, showed that exact grit and level of play that I'm hoping to bring to our program as well. And uh, ACA hockey is no joke. Um, a question I get asked a lot is, is it is it just another experience in college? And to me, it's, it's not just another experience. It's absolutely an experience, but it's an experience at a, a competitive level and one that is going to enhance any individual's um, hockey career as well as their academic experience through college. Well, it's fun to watch. Uh, you know, I've been around this program now for uh, six years watching the athletes come through, and I've seen some come through and graduate. You know, in Division Two, they had five years, and there was four years, now it's back to five. And uh, it is so much fun to see the maturity level from when they come in as, as a freshman, even though they might have played uh, many, many years, it's a different game, isn't it? It is, for sure. And. And that's our goal is not only to um, excel as a hockey program and to compete at the absolute highest level within the program, but also to graduate top um, athletes in our, their academic careers as well. And we're committed to do as much as we can to see them success or su succeed as humans overall. So when you're looking at uh, uh, recruiting uh, a top athlete to come here, um, again, in the Pac-12, this is by far uh, the, uh, the least cost of any, of any Pac-12 school to be in. You're in the mountains, you're in a beautiful area. Um, but what is the number one thing you're trying? Is it playing time? What, what's this, Give me the elevator speech if you were sitting in a living room from somebody from Chicago Mission who doesn't know, you know, she's uh, probably played at a high level. She's on the third line, maybe the second line. What's your, what's your elevator speech to her? Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is a common conversation for us right now. And um, to me, it's that these athletes bring value. And um, when you're playing the game at the U19 level, trust me, I've, I've been there. And 
you have a lot going on in your head. If you're not riding that first line, you're not consistent on power play or penalty kill, it can be a head game, especially for us as, as female athletes, but let's be honest, for humans in general. And, and we forget the value we bring to the sport, no matter what line we may be on at a U19 level or a high school level currently. And so I'm, I'm looking for um, the type of athlete that really wants to continue to work hard on the ice and to show the value that they bring innately within themselves. Hockey is not a hard game to play once you learn the skills that come along with it. It's believing in yourself and it's putting all those tools in your toolbox together. And so I want an athlete that's going to come with their toolbox ready to be sharpened and ready um, to sharpen the skills of their teammates as well. And so I think that our program offers um, a unique uh, stance to do that because we're re located right across the street from our campus. I mean, we're, these kids aren't traveling far. They get to stay on, the, on campus, live on campus if they choose to do so, or the surrounding neighborhoods, come to the rink three times a week, commit to being go, playing full out, having fun, but committing to that firm, um, hard work ethic and mentality on the ice. And then excelling as a, a academic pursuits as well. We have a lot to offer here at the university and being in the Pac-12. Yeah, it's, a, it's an unbelievable setup here, just the surroundings and the year-round fun you can have here. Uh, but when you're talking to, to these young ladies and, and you're looking at the, at the school, what are the selling points uh, other than academically and cost, uh, the different colleges that are here at the U? How do you sell to you? Yeah, um, I went here too. So I, I am a U alumni and um, I have to say, not only did I love every um, academic experience I had, but I love the community. And I think that our hockey program brings that um, through uh, as well in the sense that tonight's the teddy bear toss. All the, the teddy bears on the ice are going to Primary Children's Medical Center. That's also located on campus. And so there's opportunities to connect. And that's what I think um, speaks to me the most is that connection both on the ice as a family. We, you grow up to be a family with these individuals. I have to say my best friends are all people I played hockey with, uh, both men and women. And also uh, the community at large. Um, you can't walk around the rink tonight and not see somebody you know. And, and this great sport brings that connection uh, through to its core. It really is a family. I mean, if you look at, uh, I know you went through the programs and all the way up through a competitive level. And, uh, you know, families that are in hockey, they spend Thanksgiving together. They spend Memorial or uh, Labor Day. They've got to go to a Christmas tournament, a Martin Luther King tournament. I mean, families travel around. It does turn out to be a family sport. Yeah, yeah. And so... From the standpoint of the rink, has, has the, have uh, the, the youths in, the, in your program been able to part the waters to get enough ice time, to do scheduling? When does the schedule actually start to form up for you uh, as you look to next year and you can, again, go into these living rooms and say, hey, you know, we're going to go yep. to Michigan or we're going to go to Iowa? I mean, yep. what does that look like? Yeah, so we, um, we wouldn't have gotten to where we are today if we didn't have these things in place. So we're absolutely ready to take the ice in the fall. And... Um, the skating youths and the organization administration behind the program has laid the ground for that. And so um, we will absolutely be hitting the ice in the fall with tryouts coming up in April, the exact same time as the men's program um, in uh, the first couple weekends in April there. And then we're going to be rolling right into training camp in the fall and into our uh, full 21-plus uh, game season in the, in the fall through the spring of 2019-2020. And we do have... Um, the full commitment to travel, uh, not only to the surrounding states, but we firmly believe we have to play the best to be the best yeah. and um, plan to take some of those trips to compete against our East Coast uh, competitors as well. Okay. And uh, when you talk about training camp, uh, typically this team has gone up to McCall. What are, what are you guys looking at? Yep. So with the full support of um, the Skating Utes program, uh, we too plan to head to McCall and we'll be doing recruiting camps with some of our other teams in the um, Pac-12 area, area, Arizona State as one of those collaborators to recruit girls to come out west um, to play ice hockey as well as to pursue their academic careers. So we as coaches will be busy all through the summer and we expect our athletes to be training during the summer months as well. So what, uh, what help are you looking for from outside the U and the alumni? What, what do you want to see in the community? Absolutely. So um, any support from the community, I would love to hear from you. Uh, you can contact me directly on the Skating Utes website. 
Um, and I would love to hear what your interest is. If, if it's something to do um, with the game, say you've played yourself and you really have a passion for it, maybe we can find a, a volunteer commitment um, that would work well for your strengths. Maybe that's keeping tra track of our shots or helping us with our goaltenders. Maybe it's power skating. If you're somebody just supporting the game in the community, it's not just support. Let us know that you're out there and um, we'd love to hear from you as well. And, and most of all, um, being a voice, being a voice for these female athletes. Um, I know when I was going through my U19 years, I was really, um, I'd say scared and also just confused on what my next steps were. Uh, it's a little challenging to figure out as a competitive athlete, but also having academic dreams at the same time. And if we don't have um, those right leaders in place or those voices to inform us of the opportunities, we may miss something right at our doorstep that might be a perfect fit for what we're looking for. And so um, I just ask that the community not only continues to show the amazing support that they have for this program, but to know we're fully committed uh, to the opportunity and we're invested and ready to take the ice in the fall and we'd so appreciate him being a voice for us as well. So switching gears on you a little bit, uh, you've got about two minutes. What do you see tonight? Tell, tell me about the first period, what you saw, what, what did you like about the Utes? What did you like about uh, the Aggies? Go, go through your, your game summary the, you know, in, uh, in a minute or less. Absolutely, so uh, I have to admit I've been chatting a lot. So <laughs> my eyes are both on the ice and off the ice. But here's what I have to say, and this is what I hope happens with the women's program as well, is I love a good in-state rivalry. And so building off of the momentum from last night's game with a 3-2 win um, at the barn at Utah State, I mean, that's a loud facility. And uh, we bring the crowd here too. We have a fantastic crowd out here on the ice, or at the rink tonight and they're making it loud. But I'm telling you, that first goal is key. And for us to take um, that first uh, buzzer sound was, was quite the thrill and to see all those teddy bears go on the ice. And we're moving into the second period here with some strong momentum, but moving uh, off of a penalty. So we'll kill this and then uh, get back to full strength. Logan is a special place. I, if you ask the players uh, to a man, everybody, over the six years I've been a pro, they, they love going up there to play. That barn is full, it's loud, the hitting is fierce, it is a brawl, and it is so much fun to see it up there. And mm -hmm. so you got to experience that last night? Yeah, yeah, and it, it's a, just a great atmosphere, no matter what side of the uh, the rink you're on, if you're home or away, um, I, kudos to Utah State and the amazing program that they've grown to have here. And together we're stronger in the sport of ice hockey and it's been a, a fun rivalry and we'll see where this game takes us tonight. Yeah, and that's, that's what we have hoped for a long time as a skating youth is to be able to get that travel partner and we keep looking up to, Nor uh, to Logan. Uh, they do have the caliber, they do have the people. Uh, it's a struggle in D1, but again, there's, a, there's an opportunity to actually put a conference together if we can get a travel partner and they, you know, I guess the future we'll see. Yeah. So uh, Morgan, thank you so much for being with us and to all you fans out there. Please support the women's program. We uh, really appreciate all of you all viewers out there. And good luck to you and your team. Hey, thank you. It's all a right. pleasure. All right, hockey fans, welcome back to Salt Lake City, getting ready for our second period of the evening. Utah leading by a score of 2-1, to one, but they'll be on the penalty kill to start the second period. Matt Coma, Ryan Jones, Reese Jensen joining us, or joining us here so far here tonight. Three of us up here in the broadcast booth. Boys, your thoughts on that first 20 minutes? I mean, I think it was uh, a pretty good showing by both sides. A lot of speed um, going back and forth in the transition game. I, I, I liked the Utes, uh, you know, possessed the puck quite a bit. Um, I know that Reese brought it up. I think that Utah State did a great job keeping those, those shots out to the perimeter. So 
We'll just see if Utah can uh, break through, kill off the rest of this penalty that they have, and you know, hopefully to build that lead. And uh, as it's been all season, penalties, that's, you know, shift momentum right there and uh, stay out of the box. Utah wins games. Yep, so we'll see if it's could kill the second penalty that they took late in that first period here. The Aggies on the power play for a minute and a half. To begin the second period, Josh Kirkfleet will ring it around the boards here. Meyer able to cut it off and send it right back where it came from. Fernandez plays it on the near side. Now cut, uh, Lallier will hold on to it. Plays it down low for Walton. Back to Fernandez, top of the point, fires a shot. Casper turns it aside. It's over to Kirkfleet. Back down low for Meyer. He'll ring it around the boards once again. It won't have enough to get out. As Bell, or excuse me, Balls, gives it to Kirkfleet who fires a shot. It's a little high. Or Fernandez keeps it in. Now Walton. Try to send it in front. Stolen away by the Utes. Still hacking at it is Bastone. And it's only again to the top of the point. One timer passes. Shot by Fernandez. And that one's wide again. Aggies with a couple of good looks here, just haven't been able to find the target. As Fernelius tries to get it out, or excuse me, that's Urch that tried to get it out. Aggies still going to work here. Buck loose in the slot. Lallier has it. He'll shoot and score. So the Utes can't get the puck out, and it goes right to Dalton Lallier, who scores the power play goal, and it's tied at two. And, and that's what happens when you don't get the puck out on the penalty kill. Uh, I mean, Wyatt Light with an opportunity to, to chip it out right there and maybe, you know, maybe fumble it or something. It, it happens, but you got to get the puck out all the way down on the penalty kill, make him skate 200 feet, get back in, and set up again. Yeah, and Utah with two quick goals to start the game. Utah State with two quick back-to-back -to, -back to answer. And uh, we'll see how Utah State can build off this momentum and how Utah can... Uh, can bounce back after that. So Dalton Lallier gets the goal. It's his third of the year. As now the Utes will have to try and take the lead once again as we're tied at two. So the two penalties end up costing Utah two goals. The Aggies two for two on the power play. Utes have yet to go up man yet as they look for that third goal. Navarez fans on the shot. And now here come the Aggies again. Three on three. Drew Decker past the blue line. He'll fire a shot. Gets jammed up and Casper will corral that one and hold on. 18.08 on the clock. It's two to two here in the second. Kind of interesting move by Decker moving through the neutral zone there. It looked like he was coming in with speed and Utah State definitely had some numbers. Kind of made a, made a move around the blue line and kind of forced himself into an area where you're just not going to get a ton of scoring chances generated from that spot. So Utes kind of bailed out on that three-on-two opportunity there. So face off on the far side, picked up by the Utes. David Barnes goes back for Meyer, takes a funny bounce off the backboards. Stays in the zone. Now Hunter has the opening goal for Utah as he passes it ahead. Urch trying to get through. He takes Lubin down in the process. Kind of blew a tire and took out his defender in the process. As Barnes throws down a thunderous shoulder but it breaks the puck out for Utah State. Blauer lost it in his feet. And the Utes chip it along. Now Fornelius ahead of the play. Chance for a breakaway. Walks in, but poked away. Good play by number 28, Hunter Doyle. Yeah, great back check by Doyle, just causing Fornelius to not really get too comfortable where he can make a nice move on the goalie. And try to cut back to the short side. And surprising, because Fornelius usually chooses to go with the backhand, so tried to go with the forehand that time and uh, didn't quite work out. Maybe he too many times going into the backhand, try to or do something a little different. So we'll see what he does this time. Fornelius actually steps on the puck as he takes a tumble. Utah will keep the zone, though. Urch, top of the point, Bastone. He'll fire a shot right into the shin pads of O'Brien. It's going to come all the way back to Casper, who plays it back behind his net. Aggie's in the middle of a change. Pass off target from Utah. Kirk Felique has a man wide open in front. Lawyer had it in his feet. Couldn't pull the trigger, though. Good defense from Utah. Now here they come the other way. Light into the zone. He shoots in a blocker save from Weiss. Back and forth we go. Kirk Felique into the offensive zone for Utah State. Comes behind the net. Sends one in front off of a Utah stick. No icing. Waved off. As the Aggies will treat all the way back to their own end. Some good, uh, some good defensive play from the Utes, but back-to-back -back possessions in the slot there. Just 
you know, tying sticks up and, and poking the puck away to help neglect or to negate some chances by uh, Utah State. Paolo able to shoulder off his man for the puck. Light will gives it to Jerome, but off of his skate and it stays in the zone. Walton, rolling away, good check there by Paolo. Yeah, but the Aggies still able to keep it in as Kirkfleet gives it a Lubin, but he shuffles it right into Coulter Pritchard's uh, waiting arms there. The backup tonight, normally the starter for Utah State. Makes his first save of the night. <laughs> Face off outside into the neutral zone and right in front of the Utah State bench. And another, another line change for the Utes, just something a little different. And as a player, when, you, when you're when you kind of switching up guys that you're playing with all the night, sometimes it's good, sometimes you, you kind of lose that step and that chemistry that you've had with, with guys that you've been working with for weeks, maybe months on end. So interesting interesting coaching decision right here. We'll see, we'll see what's going on or if the lines get back to normal here. But, you know, another change. Aggies into the zone. Cutshaw fires a shot. It's turned aside by Casper. Meyer holds, gives it over the far side. Navarez can't complete the outlet pass as he gets tangled up. Just a couple of bodies get together. Decker took a tumble, and now here come the Utes. Liebernight with Banks with him. Liebernight tries to cut towards the front, stolen away by the Aggies. Cutshaw floats it ahead. Good job, Been able to bat it down. It was O'Brien, but Barnes able to pick his pocket. Now it comes the other way to Kay. To Blauer, that's a high sticking call on Bastone. And another penalty upcoming for the Utes as their third trip to the box, third power play upcoming for Utah State. And, and that's actually a smart penalty by Gino there because if any sort of possession, any sort of puck play, that, that was a three on O if, if you know, any stumble. So sometimes there are times where, you know, maybe that was an accident, maybe that was on purpose, but that's a smart place to take a penalty. Only the sixth penalty of the season now, pushes his total up to 10. With 14.54 to go here in the second period, the Aggies go on their third man advantage of the game. They are two for two so far on the power play. See how the fortunes go here in this next power play. Aggies win the draw, far top of the point. Wagons up, shot, and a goal. Got to stay out of the box for Utah. Although I will, I, you have to hand it to Utah State there. Great pass, cross ice, great finish, wide open net. And uh, the power play tonight is just rolling for the Aggies. That's yeah, Keegan O'Brien that gets the one-timer goal. And about as easy of a power play as you can draw up for Utah State. Three straight power play goals, and they have taken the lead for the first time tonight. Looks like Utah State being denied a, a late change here, but probably not too much protest as that bench has to be buzzing after that third goal. So the Aggies have just taken over this contest after Utah seemed in control. I think that's a huge goal going three unanswered now. You know, the fans are a little bit out of it, so Utah's going to need a big check or a great play to uh, to get this big crowd back into it. Oh, big collision as Lubin lays a nice check on Meany, but the Utes still press forward as Light comes with Jerome. Jerome's got it, but it poke checked away by Doyle. Utes looking for some kind of momentum here to get back in this game. It's been all Utah State since we dropped the puck in this period. Here they come again. O'Brien has the last goal. He'll fire, but it goes high. Clears the zone as well. Utah State almost to too many men on the ice, but they don't touch it on that last change there. Allows the Utes to gain the zone, though. Jerome's got it. Has a man open in the slot. Instead reverses, trying to get by Doyle. Now Jerome comes in front, and he's checked off the puck. And Barn or Meany can't get to it in time. Again they battle. Light drops it off for Meany. Utes set up in the offensive zone once again. Top of the point, Meyer has time. He'll walk in, fires a shot, deflected up out of play. Great setup there from uh, Meany to Meyer. Meyer just, you know, with the, with the vision to understand, he's got a little bit of room to work to walk in and get a good shot on goal. So puck goes up out of play, 13.45 to go. It's two to three here. And oh. yeah, go ahead. Five, uh, five on five, Utah's been the Utes have been dominating, and, and as you can see, just penalties, stupid, whether stupid or, you know, accidental on purpose, whatever's going on, penalties, 
can change the momentum of the game, and you can see now we're <laughs> down 3-2. Yeah, and I know I mentioned that uh, Utah coming into the night was eighth in the H ACHA in uh, successful penalty kills, and that number's probably going to take a little bit of a hike. So Utah's, uh, yeah, they're three for three on the power play. Think games usually go your way when you're 100% on the power play. That's what it, we stand right now. Utah, two even strength goals. Utah State with three power play goals. They win that draw as they send it uh, out to neutralize. Unable to hold on to it was Lallier. Yeah, but turned over. Now the Utes trace it back into their own end. Meyer up the near side, Owen Liebernick. Outlet pass finds Fornelius. Or excuse me, that's best or Navarra, excuse me. We're in that 21 over on that far side. Josh Kirk will fire a shot. It's blocked by Meyer. Aggie's in the middle of a change. Quickly to Meyer near side. He's got time and space. He'll gain the blue line, then the red, then the blue. Meyer into the corner. No one else there to help, though, as the Utes were in the middle of a change. Now they help out as Banks lost the handle on it. Lubin kicks it right to Navarez, but he fires a shot wide of the frame. Aggies up the near side. Duque back behind. Here comes Fornelius. Gets a nice steal. Now brings it in. Has Urch with him. He fires a shot. Weiss shuts the door. Unable to fire that puck into that. Short side corner, and Weiss makes another good save. And Fornelius with a little bit more time than he thought he had, probably could have walked the puck to the, to the front of the net a little bit more, but you know, that's a, that's a good play, good stepping up, and, and the Utah State defense just not, not paying attention, and Fornelius coming off the bench, attacking hard from the corner, and Urch going hard to the net, you know, that, that creates opportunities, and you'll see him right here again, this line, this line with a, with a goal already tonight, Urch throwing it to the net, and Forney going hard, and then Reed Hunter putting it in, you know, for the first teddy bear goal of the game. Kotschall with speed. Good poke check from Kinslow, though. As Decker looks for a pass in front. Good check by Odlin. As Kinslow looking for both Fornelius and Urch in the top of the slot. Goes by both their sticks, and the Aggies will chip it back in. Getting a little too cute was Barnes. Is that one stolen away? He's able to get it back, though. Kinslow near corner. Leaves it ahead for Barnes. Gains the uh, blue line, but no further as him and Blauer collide with the linesman here on the nearest side. Now far, weaving through the neutral zone. Lost the handle as he comes through the slot. Aggies fire a shot. It's kicked right over to the far side. Blauer a shot. It's blocked by Fornelius. A lot of net there for uh, Blauer. And kind of thankful that he's a left-hander because he probably gets to that puck you know, a couple seconds quicker if he's got that right-handed shot and was maybe to, able to put one in. And kind of lost a, lost his footing trying to adjust yeah. for that thing. And as the Utes get it back out to neutral ice, but no further. Aggies in control here yet again. As a fired shot just goes wide. That was Brett Fernandez that time. Now Hunter Doyle, top of the point. Fires a wrist shot, takes a deflection. Casper turns, turns it aside. Oh, that one just goes just wide. As that was number 42, Keegan O'Brien looking for his second. Almost had it. Top of the point. Doyle shot. Save Casper. Loose here on the near side. Unable to pull the trigger. Blauer. Now here come the Utes. Light with Fornelius. Light takes a check, but able to get, earn a faceoff here is Weiss able to hold on to that putt. Yeah, right now it's just all Aggies this period. So far dominating, getting a lot of scoring chances, and Casper's really been scr scrambling in his crease there to you know, protect the best of it that he can. It'll be interesting to see if uh, Coach Harris is making any in-game adjustments right now. Some long, long shifts by the Utes on defense. You know, out there, Odlin and Barnes were out there for two and a half minutes stuck in their zone because the Aggie, Aggie forecheck was going full force. And when that happens, you know, a lot of scrambling, a lot of stuff, just got to get the puck out and, and get a change. Here come the Aggies yet again. Josh Kirk Felipe. Gets tripped up by Light as he dived to make that poke check. And now the Utes come ahead, two on two. Connor Meany leading the charge. He'll fire a shot turned aside by Weiss. Aggies pass it up the near side boards as Kirk Fleet will just send it down to Utah's end. Bastone back for Utah. It's 
Stops behind his own net. He'll survey his options as the Utes set up a breakout here. Picking it up, Zachary Jerome has light with him, but a poke check from Kirk Fili resets the play. Near side, Paolo. Has time to skate it. Outlet pass finds Meany. Meany floats it back in front. It's loose. Shot. Weiss comes up big with another big save. Great save by Weiss. That puck was just bouncing in the slot there. Was hoping for Utah to uh, tie this game up here. I think that was Navarez that had the opportunity right on the doorstep. Had eyes for the goal, but Weiss able to make an unconventional but effective save there. First time the Utes have really challenged him in this period. And the shots, the shots, Utah in the first period was ahead by five or six, and now Utah State slowly catching up. It's uh, 23 shots for the Utes and 22 for the Aggies. Utes led the shot count 15 to 13 after that first period, so the shots are seven, seven to 10 in favor of Utah State at the moment. Utes trying to break the puck out. Liebernight able to shoulder off a check. Press it ahead. Banks helping out as well. Now Liebernight past the blue line. Outlet pass right over to O'Brien. Now Cutshaw. He's got a step past one defender, but has to go chase after it. Meyer, good positioning uh, defensively for Utah. As the Aggies in the middle of a change, Casper will let this go because of it. Liebernight looks for the outlet pass off of a skate, but does find Banks. Tries the out. Push it along for Navarez, but it's offside. Meyer has to wait. Gives it to Liebernight. Tries to go through two Aggies. How Urch has got it. Tries to go up to Meyer, and it's pickpocketed by the Aggies. O'Brien leads the charge. Passes in front looking for Blauer, but just a little ahead of him. Nice play to get that puck over just a hair too far for him. The Utes bailed out once again. And good play there by Andrew Urch, able to block that shot from the point. Now he's set, he hits a nice check. Hunter looking for something, trying to just corral that puck. Backhanded into the corner. Now the Aggies bring it out again. Here comes Blauer. Opportunity for a three on two. Instead, he just chips into the corner. Aggies will change the forward line. Now the Utes with numbers the other way. Barnes. Into the zone. He'll fire a shot off the shoulder of Weiss. Looked like it was tracking for that corner as he lays down a check in the far corner. Lallier trying to clear the zone. It's kept in by Utah only for a moment, though. Comes back to the captain, Kirk Foley. He sends it all the way down. This should be icing on the Aggies, and it is. As the whistle blows with 7.50 to go, it's 3-2 Aggies. If you're joining us, two power play goals. From Utah State here in the second period, have the Aggies up by one. Now a chance for Utah to uh, step up and maybe score a goal here. There's a tired Aggie line out there. They've been out there for about 45 seconds now after the icing. New fresh legs out for the Utes, and, and we'll see what happens here. Opportunity here for Utah to tie this hockey game up as the Aggies win the draw, though. Kirk Felique gets it back at the red line. He'll fire it in on Casper. This one he'll be forced to cover, and... Just as Reese was saying, it was a chance for Utah, but instead the Aggies are the one that converts on and they get an offensive change, or offensive draw and a, and a change after that icing call. Yeah, it was, a, it was a great job by those three Aggie forwards, kind of a scramble after the puck drop, but they remained calm. They were able to you know, collect the puck, move it in, and get a stoppage of play, and most importantly for them, get a change. So Utah is gonna need to find a, a, an answer here pretty quickly as uh, Utah State has just remained in total control of this second period. Aggies continue to work as Machunis gives it near side. Decker looking for Cutshaw, finds him, leaves it to Decay. Back down low, Decker. Center to in front, right to Wyatt Light. He'll skate it along, here come the Utes three on three. Light, top of the slot, has time, he'll fire, takes a deflection up and out of play. As I believe that's Cutshaw that went hard into the boards on that back check. Appears to be okay. And he's going to get a penalty now. For yeah. mouth and off, I think, is the call. We'll see what Andy Van Wagener, our head official, has to say here. It looked like uh, one of his teammates, I believe it was Ball, was kind of gave him a hug and was maybe trying to... Um, 
you know, possibly calm him down. But something he clearly said was uh, was the refs weren't happy about it. He's going to sit for two minutes because so, of it. Yeah, so Chris Cutshaw, the first penalty of the night for Utah State, an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty for something he said on the way back after that collision. So the Utes get their first power play. We'll see if they can knot this game up. And we're going to get a penalty on Utah. This will be Banks getting tied up with Blauer. And that's a pretty unfortunate call that Banks couldn't uh, and it's a hold. keep his cool there and just kind of let things slide because now, you know, it's going to be four on four. I don't think they're going to take any Aggie players nope. either. So. Blauer went straight to the box. It's just Banks for holding. And just like that, three seconds into it, the Utes have killed their first power play of the night. So as Reese has been mentioning all night, the mistakes have been costly here for Utah. As Nick Fornelius is getting an explanation from our officials over on that far side. Yeah, and I just went to double check the uh, stats and information. Banks now, he's had what, two penalties tonight? That's his first one tonight. Or first, okay, so first one tonight, but still that bumps him up to 41 pims on the year, and he actually leads this Utah team in uh, time spent in the sin bin. And so we play four on four here for an extended period of time, about a minute 45 left in this four on four. The Aggies will get a very, 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 very short power play of only three seconds when this U power play uh, penalty is over. Hey, if the Cornelius Aggies takes a shot to the head and, we're, and another shot to the head. That's two from number 15, Trace Farr. Delayed penalty coming up on Utah State as Casper to the bench. Cornelius plays it in front. Aggies touched it, but no whistle. Now they get the whistle. And as we'll see, this should be two penalties. I, I would think it'd be two penalties. It looked like uh, pretty much a carbon copy of, of the same hit, and I think uh, there you just see some, some good leadership by Cornelius. You see the... Uh, yeah, uh, this is going to be the one. That he's not, uh, you know, retaliating there and negating the penalty. So it's just the boarding call on number 15, Trace Farr. And so it's four on three now. So a lot of open ice here, Olympic ice sheet. A lot of room to maneuver here on this power play. That could have very easily been a cross check and a boarding call. And, and lucky one there that the, you know, Trace Farr isn't in the box for four minutes. I am surprised by that because he took the shot to the head. It should have been head contact as well as Weiss makes the save here. Had the initial call that hit the head. That's what when Andy Van Wagner put his hand up for the first one. Then you saw that cross check in the back right after. You right. think that's that's the one that ended up getting called, but well, it, but it is a power play for Utah, so you can't complain too much. And and you know at the the beginning of the game we were just saying that there's always you know a decent amount of penalty minutes shared between these two teams when they meet up. And now just looking at all the different numbers on the scoreboard, this looks like a Utah-Utah State game. Utes to work here, four on three power play. Meyer near side. Utes looking for the tying goal here. Meyer surveying his options, doesn't really have anywhere to go. Now gives it to Barnes, top of the point. Wrist shot comes right back to him. Now Light comes down low, back to Barnes. A lot of traffic in front. It's blocked by Dagan Walton, it's still loose. Decker's got it covered. It'll be another penalty on Utah State for covering the puck here. Yep. And it's going to be stacked penalties now here for Utah State. They're taking them both. I, Interesting. They're taking both of them here. I think overall those first two blocks, you know, by the Utah State defense, just fearless getting your, you know, your full body in front of a shot, especially one coming from the big boy, David Barnes. Um, but it turns out a little mental mistake and you know, it's a party in the box for the Aggies. There now. are four Aggies in the box now as both Decker and Walton go to the box. You got to think Utah really needs to take advantage right now of this, uh, this opportunity once everything gets all sorted out. So here's what's going to happen for those who are not officially uh, up to date with the officials rule book here. This will be stacked penalties for Utah State, meaning that Chris Cutshaw, who's in the box with 39 seconds left on his power play, he will not be able to leave the box when this penalty is over. And the Decker penalty will not start until that Cutshaw penalty is over as well. So the Aggies will be down two men for at least 40 seconds and a whistle. And the Utes keep the same four out there that they just had. 
we should expect a lot more movement out of these guys rather than just stand still passing. You see him kind of creeping a little bit closer to the net, looking for that backdoor opportunity that you're always looking for on a five on, on, a, on a four on Ooh. three, five on three. Had an opportunity, Meyer full, fan on the shot though. Utes will try again here. Packing, just quick passing between Meyer, Barnes, and Light as Meyer fires this one, deflected out of play. And kind of going with what you're saying, you know, when you have four guys in the box, especially after two of your uh, five on three killers go into the box, you start to get pretty thin on the bench about guys that are actually put in this situation. I know, you know, for myself, I, I would maybe penal, uh, be on the penalty kill when it's a five on four, but they never put my slow feet out there for five <laughs> on three. So look for a lot of movement and passing for the Utes to kind of maybe expose some of these guys who might not get as many reps in Utah State practice. So we have 14 seconds left on the first penalty to cut Shaw. It will not be the end of the four on three here, though. Is in the final five seconds will cut off. That will be the beginning of the next Utah State penalty. They'll still be five on three as the Utes will be down. Banks will come out in three seconds. So the Utes now back to five on three here for 34 seconds. That will be when Farr gets out of the box. So Utah five on three now, looking to tie it. Big opportunity here for Anelius. Traffic in front, hits Weiss in the cage. It bounces on top of the cage and blown dead by the officials. So Kutchall able to leave the box now. He'll go back to the uh, back to the bench as his penalty has expired. Far will be the next one to go, but his, again, his penalty will not start or he will not be able to leave until there's a stoppage of play after his time is over due to the stacked penalties. And that, that shot by the Utes is, is not really what you're looking for on a, on a five on three. You want to work it around as much as possible till you can get the, the, the optimal shot. And they got 18 seconds here. Actually, since Farr doesn't get out of the box, they can, they can play this five on three for a while. Just can't have a stop once this 10 seconds is over on Farr's penalty. So three seconds, two and one. The Farr penalty is over. Again, he cannot leave. So now we are down to the final two penalties for Utah State. This one comes in front. Aggies will get to it and Chase Ball will send it all the way down. So we have a minute 10 of five on three time. Next penalty to go will be Drew Decker. He will have, he'll be allowed to leave the box when his time is up. Trace Farr waiting for a whistle before he can come back out. Utes still five on three here. Meyer gives it to Barnes, walks into the slot, fires a shot, a lot of traffic, but Weiss comes up big once again and Farr will now leave the box. So the stack penalties are now over. They're down to the final two penalties here. So 52 seconds of five on three time and then about 40 seconds or so of five on four time here for the Utes to try to equalize. These opportunities when you have a five on three is definitely a little bit tough. Uh, you know, I was talking about the experience level of some of the Aggie killers with a lot of the injuries, especially to some of the veterans, you know, we probably have a lot of new guys that are, you know, stepping into a, a five-on-three situation on the offensive side as well. Hutes continue to work. Barnes at the top of the point. Gives it a light. Thought about a shot instead. Gives it back. Everybody crunched up in front of that crease. As Meyer holds. Nowhere to shoot, though. Gives it to White. He comes top of the point. Has a lane. He fires. Save. Rebound. Oh. Saved by Weiss. Great save off the paddle, and the Aggies clear. Just a fantastic stop by Weiss. That's highlight material right there. Utes have a man in front of the play. Here comes Meany. Meyer cutting with him on the back door. Meany gets by a man, but can't hold on to the puck, though. As the Utes continue to go to work. Two seconds, one. First penalty over. Drew Decker out of the box. We're five on four for 40 seconds. Utes fire shot. Weiss makes the save. It's loose down low. Still in the corner, though. Decker tries to clear. Cannot. Utes still looking for that goal. They've had multiple opportunities. Now Barnes quickly to Meyer. One time, we slides over and makes the save. As that's, I believe, number 23. I think that's McKirkfleet that hit, or excuse me, it's Bell that hit the Ute into Weiss there. That was Jerome uh, trying to attack in front. But boys, a couple of great golden opportunities here for Utah. Can't find anything to get into the back of the net here. Yeah, that was just a great sequence by Weiss on uh, two pretty good opportunities for the Utes, and Weiss just standing on his head back there for the Aggies. 
So 22 seconds remain on this power play for Utah. In total, it'll be five total power plays here for Utah over this span. 0 for 4 through the first four of them. Utes win the draw, but Lieber Knight can't corral it. And Lallier able to send it down. The Aggies wanted a call for hooking, didn't get it. As the Utes will have one last rush here on the power play. Kirk Felix steals it away, clears the zone, and that will be it. So five power plays in the span of about three minutes for Utah, and they can't find the back of the net. Lieber Knight leaves it for Banks. Utah still looking for that goal. It's going to come on net to Weiss, and he'll hold on. Yeah, great job by the Aggies. Penalty killers just, you know, going through that adversity there and killing everything off. Uh, a little bit of a confusing time for that bench, I'm sure. And it's been a dominating period uh, on the scoreboard and, you know, on the penalty kill so far as we wind down to two minutes here left in the second. So face off here on the near side. It will be Navarez going up against Cutshaw. In this last two minutes here is a huge momentum shift. And, you know, any period, the last minute of any period can change, you know, going into the next period and, and overall the game, especially when it's this close at 3-2. So Utes looking to tie this up before the period ends as Navarez down low. Stolen away by Lubin. Chips it along looking for number 43. That's Machunas. As he's got it. Stops at the hash marks. Takes a good check from Navarez. Utes yeah. having trouble clearing it though. Yeah, great hit there by Navarez. Machunas kind of uh, stopped there and opened up his body and was just a perfect target for a good clean hit. Here's a foot race. Urch is going to win it for Utah. But he takes a big check from Lubin, the sturdy defenseman from Utah State. And he rings it hard around for Cutshaw. And trying to clear him out was Paolo. Got just enough of him to bump him off the puck. So we're down to the final 86 seconds and change here. Puck to the top of the point. Aggies looking for another goal here. Shots blocked, comes back out to neutralize. And actually, something that we haven't really noticed, there's been quite a few shot blocks in this game just... Uh, you know, incidental shot blocks and, and a lot of times where guys are in the right spot at the right time and that's uh, on defense, that's really effective trying to get the puck out of zone and, and changing momentum. A big shot block can change momentum as much as a big hit or, uh, or a big goal can. Right. Final minute of the second period, Utah still looking for that third goal. Zachary Jerome gonna try and get it right now as he has his shot blocked. Aggies once again pick it up and outlet pass to Blauer. He lost it as he tried to get through two Utes. Light will agree group. A lit pass looking for Meany. Still loose. Now back to the Utah State end. Back on net to Weiss. Far holds on to it. Battling with Jerome. He takes a big bear hug to him. Ute fans want to call, didn't get it. Jerome can't fire the shot. Now that Stone tried to fire one. Now Light has time, fires, and it's saved again by Ethan Weiss. Yeah, pretty interesting no call there. Uh, you know, the refs kind of let the guys play and figure it out in the first period, and then the second period they've been calling everything. So from a consistency standpoint, it's kind of interesting to see that uh, the, there wasn't a whistle there, but, you know, they're on the ice and we're up here in the booth, so what do we know? One last chance here, 11 seconds before the intermission. Banks will take the draw. Meyer set up for the one-timer off the draw here if he can get it. Aggies with a late change here. <laughs> Going off the ice is Hunter Doyle. Back on the ice is Trace Farr. Utes trying to win the draw. Instead, it's the Aggies. Comes to Farr near corner. And he'll try to eat up the final five seconds. Down to three, two, and one. That's going to be it for the second period. A one final hit <laughs> by Navarez as the horn sounds. And all Aggie second period, they put two power play goals on the board. They lead 3-2 going into the second period or third period. Thoughts on the second, though, boys? Uh, I mean, great hit there. You could just tell that's by Navarez. That's a frustration hit right there. There's some words exchanged afterwards. You know, we've mentioned these teams really dislike each other, but I definitely think that's got to be a very frustrated Utes locker room after 
basically getting dominated for 20 minutes by uh, an opposing team on home ice. But that's that that might be that momentum changer hit too. You see right at the end of the period, it's clean within the last couple seconds, big hit. And definitely, you know, anything anything they can take at this point, the, the Utes are gonna need to get that momentum to shift back their way. Going into the period, a big, a big hit will do it. All right, so we'll see if that ends up being the motivation that Utah needs. Try and get back in front in this contest. We're through 40 minutes here at the Utah Ice Sheet and the Utah State Aggies have a 3-2 lead over the Utah Utes. We'll step aside and we come back. Jay Sewell will be back with more post-intermission thoughts. And then we'll be back for the third period. 3-2 Aggies after two. You're watching University of Utah Hockey here on YouTube.
All right, hockey fans, welcome back to Salt Lake City, getting ready for our third and final period of the night. The Utah Utes trailing the Utah State Aggies by a score of 3-2 to two through 40 minutes of play. Matt Coma, Ryan Jones, Reese Jensen joining you upstairs for this broadcast. So glad you guys could join us here tonight, Utah and Utah State fans alike. Uh, boys, uh, just it's, it was a second period that was just kind of controlled by Utah State. The Utes did have their chances on that power play, but... You got to feel like there's something that's got to turn the tide in Utah's favor. Something has to happen here in this 20 minutes to make it go the Utah's way, right? Yeah, Reese, I'll let you speak on it first. You came back to the booth here pretty fired up. What a what do you think the Utes have to do to uh, to take this game in the third? Well, I think uh, I think at the end, at in 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 between the intermission here in the locker room, there was a lot of negative energy, and and the coaches came in and kind of turned that around. And I think they come out, use that big hit at the end of the period, and uh, you know, start going, start using the speed that they have, and not let the Aggies get any speed or any control of the game, and you know, start out right now, and, and that's what it's looking like, control right out of the gates. So no penalties carry over here into our final period. We're five on five as Utah has it in the offensive zone. They play it over to Lieber Knight, who rings it down low. Navarre is waiting for it, passes it, looking for Banks, deflected. Top of the point, Meyer plays it back behind, bounces off the backboards. Down on the corner, Navarez to Banks. Weaving back and forth goes Darren Banks. How ends up losing that battle as the Aggies will send it all the way down the ice, but not far enough for an icing. Nice outlet pass, Meyer to Meany. Now to Banks, fires, and we shuts the door. Wow. Great pass by Meyer. He kind of looked like he had eyes in the back of his head there. Meany takes a hack at it. It's wide. And now here comes Cutshaw. Off to the races. Walks in and puts it home. Chris Cutshaw on the breakaway and extends the Aggies' lead to two. And just, just as I was saying earlier, Cutshaw, the fast, one of the faster guys you'll see in uh, ACHA Division II. And, you know, using it there, just a little chip out, and Cutshaw goes off. And... Oftentimes in the past, we haven't seen him scoring on breakaways, but this year, you know, maybe a little confidence, maybe change of the stick, change of the skates, some, some to get him going, yep. he's been scoring. Yeah, you tried to warn him, Reese, but they wouldn't listen. <laughs> <laughs> Dude's got wheels. <laughs> and those wheels were on full display there. That is Chris Cutshaw's eighth of the year. And it extends Utah State's lead to two. Utah trying to get it right back here. Light on the back, or excuse me, me on the back door. Tried to fire that through Travis. That took a block. And Meany's second attempt. Deflected wide. It's going a little high anyway. Now Jerome tries to go back down low for light. Reading the play, it was Blauer. He brings it along for Utah State. He takes a tumble. Utah back in control. Here they come two on two. Light tries to get by a ball. Couldn't do it. Lubin goes hard into the boards. No call from the officials, though, as Light tries to stuff it on the short side. Ooh. He gets run over, and that will be the panel, the retaliation penalty there. And as Farr got kind of shoved in the back behind the boards, didn't get the call, and this time he takes a full steam ride over Wyatt Light. And he'll uh, go ahead to the box. A huge hit. A, you know, probably good call there just to keep him safe. He kind of took a run at him. We'll see what they end up calling for the penalty, but... Just want to call back to uh, something I believe Reese said earlier in the broadcast is just how important in hockey your uh, first minutes of the game and your, your first minutes of the period and uh, final minutes of the period are and how you're playing. And I mean, Utah State has really done a great job at that. They've scored the, the first goal with .6 left in the first. They had two quick ones to open up the second and now another quick one to open up the third. And Trace Farr's night is done. It's going to be a five in a game misconduct for that hit. As the referees... Took a look at it, talked it over, and agreed it's a five and a game for Trace Farr for that charge. And the Utes, again, will have an opportunity here. A five-minute major power play is upcoming here for Utah. Yeah, I think that's a pretty, uh, I think that's a pretty fair call. Uh, you know, he took a big run at him, and, you know, nowadays they're trying to make hockey a lot safer of a game. And, just stuff like that, conduct like that, I guess just not going to fly anymore. And you can tell when a player gets angry, comes out of the corner looking looking for a head to take off, and that's exactly what Farr did. And and actually not not very like Farr. I, I used to play with Trace Farr uh, a few years ago back at uh, Lake Forest Academy in prep school, and, and 
not a very uh, not a very tempered guy, but you know uh, a big hit like that that doesn't get called from from Wyatt Light comes back retaliates, and that's been a big issue for the Utes all season. And now the Aggies are seeing it. Retaliation, you know, doesn't pay off in in any good favor. So five minute penalty here, and the Utes looking to capitalize again. You know, quite a few penalties and quite a few power plays. We'll let, let's see what they do here. Utah is 0 for 5 tonight with the man advantage. A power play goal or two here would be huge for the Utes, but the Aggies win the draw and send it all the way down. For those keeping stats at home, Connor McCackney will serve the five minute penalty for Utah State. As Chase Farr has been ejected from this contest, a five minute major and game misconduct. A little bit of help by the ref to, to prevent the Utes from entering the zone there. Head contact is the call, so that charge right to the head of Light ends up being the offense as the Utes go to work here. Five on four, they need a goal here. Try and get back in this, down by two. I'll just cross ice pass, Paolo shot, and it gets in the pads of Lieber Knight. They hack once and twice, but we see able to recover in time to trap that puck. Does that look like it was gonna be tipped in front, but it ends up in the pads of Lieber Knight and just on the side of the net. Yeah, some good passing by the Utes power play there to set up that opportunity and uh, just unfortunately didn't get the bounce to go their way. Unfortunately, Wyatt Light back out on the ice after taking that big shot to the head. So we'll see if he can use that energy and regroup here. Utes top line out there, Meany, Light, and Jerome. Meyer off the drive and an easy glove save there from Weiss. He sticks the glove out there. Not a whole lot of speed on that one, on that one timer from Meyer. Get off the bakery. We'll reset again over on the far side. Let's see if that circle does any better for Utah. Aggies win the draw, but can't clear. Now Meany holds as the Utes set up the power play. Coming up on four minutes to go, and in as Meyer fires a shot, deflects off Jerome and out of play. Might have taken a deflection off of Machunis, and that's what it looks like it did. So we'll reset again in the far circle. And a change in center. Meany on this uh, Meany on this line hasn't been playing center the whole game, but Jerome's been struggling on draws a little bit, so Meany takes over, and that's just something that, that as a teammate, you're accountable for, for everybody else. So you're struggling, you step up and you say, hey, you know, you take over for me in the circle, you start winning some draws and, you know, win one right there, get some opportunities to score some goals. Utes trying their best to try and find something home. Two shots have been wide. Meyer thought about it and he said gives it to Barnes, walks in, back door had light, but the pass too high. Meyer pokes it, keeps it on side. As the Utes go to work again, light behind the net for Meany. Tries to go in front for Jerome, good block there by Duque. Long shift for these Aggie penalty killers. Got a lot of tired legs out there. Meany tries to go all around the world there. Now he holds, looks for the short side shot. It's blocked and an easy clear for Utah State. They'll change those tired legs that they've had on the ice. I jinxed it. I'm sorry, guys. I think I jinxed that one. <laughs> Three minutes to go. Two minutes gone in this five-minute major power play for Utah. Meyer chips it to light. Rest of the line has changed for Utah. Now as they give it to Jerome, he fires. Weiss makes the save. Still loose as it settles behind the net. Backhanded out by the Aggies, but not out of the zone. Second attempt can't clear either. Lieber Knight leaves it for Paolo. Now top of the point, Meyer with time. He'll fire. Weiss makes the save. Loose on the doorstep and clear just wide. Utes buzzing. Meyer, one-time shot just goes wide, and the Aggies clear out to neutralize. Yeah, Meyer with a couple good looks, Barnes with a couple good looks, just unfortunately the puck hasn't found the back of the net. And I mean, Weiss right now is definitely uh, looking like he's gonna find himself in the three stars of the game if he can uh, keep up this performance. Mute set up yet again. Here's Fornelius, gives it to Meyer. Meyer comes center, lot of traffic in front. Rashad scores! <laughs> Brett Meyer, power play goal, and the Utes back within one. You could just feel that one coming. Meyer buzzing, like I said, he had a lot of shots on the shift. Good traffic out in front, and finally one finds in the back of the twine for the Utes. And two minutes left here to keep it going. Uh, you have two more minutes of a power play, ton of momentum, no one to release from the box, and 
That's a huge one by ca Captain Brett Meyer. So Brett Meyer gets the goal. It's a power play goal for Utah. It's his seventh of the year for Meyer, and it's three to four now. Utes back within one goal, still on the power play for a minute 59. Yeah, just a great shift there for the for uh, Myron. And here comes Cutshaw immediately off the draw. The Cats were able to save that one. You'd think uh, Coach Hurst told these guys, hey, maybe write that guy's number down. Utes with the puck, Lieber Knight takes a little bit of a shoulder as he dumps that puck in. So Meyer cuts the lead to one, makes the last 15 minutes of this game a lot more interesting. As you'd score their first goal since the 316 mark of the first period. Fornelius into the zone. Looking for somebody in front, comes behind the net. A lot of traffic there as Fornelius comes to the top. Gives it a Paolo shot, save, rebound, cuts in front, just goes wide. Back to the top of the point. Kept in by Utah, over the far side, Meany. Utes still going to work here on the power play. Down low for Banks. Banks comes to your side, stops it, and he scores! Darren Banks, second goal of the night, and it ties the game at four. And the exact same goal again by Banks, wrapping it around on the backhand, this time putting it in on the five hole. A lot of energy. Uh, Utes are buzzing. Yeah, I just recall an old saying taught to me by a wise man, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, he Banks going back to the well with that move right there. And now the life kind of coming back. We got the fans on their feet singing the Utah fan. And uh, quite some time left. We got a tie, tie game right now. And they're still on the power play for another 58 seconds. Two power play goals from Utah. Meyer and Banks have tied the hockey game at four. Utes, here comes Utah looking for the lead. They haven't had it since the early parts of the second period. Jerome to Barnes. Utes with all the momentum right now, but a poor pass cut off by Cutshaw and sent all the way down. Excuse me, number 42. That would be Keegan O'Brien with the steal there. Down to the final 30 seconds of this major penalty. Light into the zone. Fires a short angle shot. That one, Weiss. Able to say no to, flashes that leather once again. And that's a, that's a good try by Wyatt Light. I've, I've been thinking that the whole game. The Utes have been skating it in and going around the net every time. You know, giving it a try from the goal line just to try and, you know, with all the momentum, try and sneak it in is, is never a bad move. And Wyatt Light trying to go short side high, which uh, would have been a pretty sweet goal. Yeah, and you never know when you might catch uh, the, the opposing goalie kind of cheating to, to make sure after, especially after Banks with the two, um, two goals from behind the red line. You know, you might catch him sleeping and moving from post to post, not being diligent there. Errant pass from David Barnes sends Utah all the way back into their own end. Final five seconds of the major penalty here. McKechnie getting ready to come out. As Utah gains the blue line, Meyer will chase after it in the corner. Utah stay back to full strength, but it's tied at four. Puck back out, here comes McKechnie. He'll send it all the way down. Aggies change up the, from their penalty kill unit into a fresh five skaters. Utah keeps their first line out there. Meyer weaving through the offensive zone as Dagan Wallen takes a tumble in the top of the slot. Put him in the spin cycle. Still able to get that puck out though as Stephen Paolo back for Utah. Leaves it for Wyatt Light. Utes reset with 12 and a half to go in this contest. Tied at four. Shots 36 to 26 in favor of Utah. As they have dominated this third period so far. Pass off target, and this will be icing on Utah. So 12-18 remains in the contest. Four to four is your score. The, we talked about the Utes needing something to happen in this third period. They got it. Yeah, it looked like uh, Paolo there was trying to stretch past the Urch, who had uh, intentions on changing instead. So lucky then clip a skate, and the, the Utes are still full strength, not, not taking uh, too many men there. Shot six to two in this period for those keeping track at home. Shots were 30 to 27 after the second period, in favor of Utah. A lot of shots between these two teams last night. I think they accounted for 92 shots on the score sheet last night. 
which uh, doesn't seem correct to me, but if you're looking at it tonight, <laughs> we're 36-27 we're and 12 lot. minutes left. There's still a lot of time left, so could could be reaching that high 70s, maybe 80s area if we if we keep getting the number of shots that we're seeing tonight. That takes a funny bounce for in Utah's favor. Unable to convert on it, though, as they regain control in the neutral zone. Back to Odlin over to the far side, Best Stone. Just tapped along by Hunter right to the Aggies, and they'll... Play back and forth here. This goes all the way down to the Utah's end. Bastone, weak backhand. Does its job though. Odlin up the near side boards for Cornelius. Try to find an outlet pass. Was behind both of his targets. Able to get the puck back though. Takes a hack. He gets it past the blue line. Oh, oh. almost a deadly turnover there. As Cornelius tries to shut it on the near side. And turned aside by Weiss. Ute's still going here. Cornelius has Banks in front. Instead, tries to float it to the top of the point, splits the D, and it's all the way back down. Almost a deadly turnover there for Utah State. Yeah, I think Forney was able to get to that puck. He's just a little bit too tight near uh, near Weiss in the crease. Barnes, uh, with, Barnes a nice with a nice move there. Banks tried to look for the hat trick. Had it blocked, Fornelius, toe drag. He gets taken down, but the Aggies will play on. Three on one if they hurry. Pass is off target, and it's offside to boot. So whistle with 10.42 to go. And a little bit of luck there because the Utes were stuck on a one on three and the Aggies had a lot of speed coming up. If that wasn't offsides and, and the pass was on the tape, you don't know what would have happened. And that's why, that's why in practice, and that's what separates players from different levels, you know, the speed's very similar, but making those plays on the tape consistently and, uh, and you, you see it there, like that consistent pass gets a three on one. Almost a nice little combination play there between Light and Jerome. Puck goes all the way into the Utah State end though. Pass up the near side, boards, cut off by Utah. Light, Wyatt Light had a lot of Chris Cutshaw in his face. As he's forced back out to neutral, license sends it back in. Aggie's looking for the stretch pass, getting a stick on it, Paolo, and that's offside. As again, the streaking Cutshaw looking to get behind the Utah defense. Yeah, like uh, Brett Meyer with the back check there, he actually makes the call before the refs, points him out, forces him to, to blow that whistle there. Utes will, or excuse me, Aggies will change up the forward line here, but it's too late, so they'll keep that first line out there. Machunis, uh, Cutshall, and Decker, I believe. And without far, the Aggies currently running, uh, consistently running 4D right now, which you can expect those guys are getting a little bit tired here. And, you know, within the last couple minutes of the game, you might see some, some fatigue and some tired legs out there. So see if the Utes can take advantage. Meyer almost with a deadly turnover of his own there as Decker was able to cut that off. And he tries to send it down low. Meyer, or excuse me, Meany able to steal that one. Back and forth they go. Utah almost caught in the middle of a change, but Odlin back <coughs> for the University of Utah. Past the halfway point of the third period, tied at four. Chris Cutshaw made it a two goal lead, followed by power play goals from Meyer and Banks so far here in the third. Yeah, Reese, going back to what you just said, you know, with, with tired legs out there, the, the Utes kind of had an opportunity there to maybe go four on three, get the puck deep, and keep those guys out there. Instead, it's a turnover near the blue line, and Utah State was finally able to change. So it's the difference between those passes and plays, making those who's going to win and lose tonight. The dueling fan base is cheering for their teams over on the far side. This should be icing if it makes it. It does not, so we play on. Coming up on nine minutes to go. Both teams looking for the next one. Odlin holds in his own zone. Backhand pass finds Navarez. He'll skate it along himself. Not a whole lot of speed there. As Aggie's able to bump him off the puck and Kirk Fleet will send it down. Aggie's change. Newtz will try the breakout once again. Stretch pass to Urch. Urch into the zone, floats one to Weiss, and this one will cover, and offensive draw coming. Yeah. 
So it's just 8.30 left on the clock. It'll be interesting to see if uh, Coach Harris decides he wants to maybe shorten up the bench or what adjustments they'll make to try to finally pop this last goal. So face off here on the near side. Blauer goes against Banks. One by the Aggies. Quickly across over the far side. Looking for the stretch pass through the feet of McCackney. No icing though as he got a piece of it. Clearing attempt, stolen by Blauer. Has a man in front, good defense from Utah. Back to the top of the point. Down low now. Utah steals it back. Lieber Knight, cross ice to Fornelius. Banks ahead of the play, or Barnes ahead of the play and he's offside. He was coming hard across that blue line just a little too early. Yeah, he had that look in his eyes and then I think once the pass came across, he you know, looked over at Forney with the big eyes and just couldn't stay onside. His momentum was taking him pretty deep in the zone there. So face off back into the neutral zone. Jerome goes against Cutshaw for this one. The Utes yeah. having a lot of trouble in the face-off circle tonight, and and they were talking about in the locker room, uh, not a lot of true centers in the lineup right now. A lot of the a lot of the true centers, uh, Alex King, uh, Joseph Di Benedetto, both true centers, and and the top two centers are are out of the lineup for the Utes right now, and that's that's tough. That's tough to be a, a center and not or a winger that's playing center and not knowing how to take face-offs. It's where those little little practice drills, if you can get them in during during the weekday, come into play. But it has been a rough night for Utah in, in the faceoff circle so far as Jerome gets run over. No call from either official as we play on. Meyer able to poke it away. There was a physical hit by Meany just a little bit ago too. So the physicality is still in play here between these two teams. A lot more penalties tonight than we saw last night. Yeah, and you gotta be careful here, you know, seeing as the game gets ramped up is, you know, trying to go for the home run hit, you either put yourself out of position or, you know, possibly in the penalty box or, you know, uh, out of the game uh, as the case is for uh, Utah State. Under seven minutes now to go. 6.52 remains in our hockey game tonight. 4-4 four, four the score. We want to thank everybody again for watching us tonight. Matt Coma, Ryan Jones, Reese Jensen up here in the broadcast booth bringing this one to you here live on YouTube. Want to thank all the Utah fans, all the Utah State fans joining us on tonight's broadcast as the Aggies win the draw. Holly pass Lallier. Goes across the ice. Has O'Brien. Down, battling with the Utah defense, trying to send it in front, took off a stick. Top of the point, shot, bounces past Casper's pads. Just wide. That was Doyle on the shot. Lucky bounce for the Utes there. Ertz trying to will that puck ahead, but Kirk Valique able to steal it away. Now it's back to Utah. Ertz has its pocket picked. Check from Kirk Valique. Utah still in control, though. Oblin, D to D pass to Barnes. Wants to go long with it. Goes off of Kirk Fully, so no icing, but it goes right to an Aggie. And another turnover. Walking in. Shot. Casper turns it aside. Aggies with a good look there, but Blauer backhands it into his own zone. Aggies go back after it. Ball up the near side. McCackney stolen away by Banks. Has to wait up on the delayed offside. Barnes surveys his options. Gives it a Meyer near side. Back and forth it goes. Banks off of his skate, no icing. <laughs> down low now, Fornelius is going to battle with Geyer down there. Still battling. Now Lieber Knight's got it. Looking for something in front. Has Banks a shot saved by Weiss. Owen Lieber Knight so good on the walls. You watch him in practice and, and even in games. The way he uses uh, the way he uses his body position and his feet to get out of to get out of some some sticky situation on the walls helps him gain space and, and get opportunities like the one you just saw for Banks there. Coming down to five minutes to go here. Pass up the near side boards. Fornelius can't control. Comes to Decker, hits it right into the feet of Cushall. Still loose in the neutral zone, picked away by the Utes. Cornelius, D to D, 
Meyer quickly up. Liebernight just taps it along and Banks will lead the charge. Rest of the line changes as Banks gets by a one defender. Comes behind the net, tried to send it in front for Fornelius off the side of the net. Comes up to Paolo, a drive, and Weiss shuts the door. It was a great save there by, uh, by Weiss. I mean, not too much trouble. It kind of came right at him, but he's having a stellar game for, uh, for giving up four goals. Um, you know, both goaltenders have actually looked pretty good tonight. It's just that some of the uh, opportunities for these goal scorers have just been better. Shots eight to three in this third period as it stands right now. In favor of Utah. Utes in control. Jerome looking for light and went off of an Aggie stick and now the Aggies have it. Lallier sends it down low. Utes will chase after it. Lallier gets to it first. Paolo and Bastone will tie him up. Bastone's got it now. 4-10 to go. Still tied at four. Bastone looking to go coast to coast with it. Lost it at the Aggie blue line. Utah staying in possession. Lallier, it's a ball quickly over to the far side. Tapped along. This will be icing on Utah State. Did not gain that red line. And the officials will make sure the Aggies do not complete that change with 3.57 to go. Yeah, it looks like a couple of Aggies players just trying to pile in the bench and just confuse the refs there so they don't know who is exactly out there on the ice for the icing. But You like can't blame them. Up. Hey, it's a great trick. I, I tried to do it all the time. You just get guys on the ice, guys off the ice, and just let them figure it out. Aggies are down a man, so they'll send another one out. Brandon Blauer will take the draw. It means Kirk Fleet will be kicked out of this faceoff, which means Brandon Blauer will... Thought about taking that. Instead, O'Brien will go against Durham. Puck left on the circle and picked up by Utah State. Josh Kirkville, the captain, takes a shot, deflects up over the Mark Weiss uh, banner up there. Hit, hit just underneath the number two. That takes a massive deflection up and out of play. Yeah. Sent that one to the next county. <laughs> It'll be a treat for the janitors to find up yeah. on the up in the rafters in a couple of days. Three minutes, 48 seconds left in this game. It'll be interesting to see uh, which side's going to step up and which player's going to step up and hopefully net that uh, game-winning goal in regulation here. Utah win control for Neely is trying to get through a couple of players. There's, he's tied up with McKechnie. The referees let it play out. Fornelius gains the zone, top of the point. Odlin fires just wide, almost bounces in front, but settles behind the cage. Liebernight gives it to Banks. Quick lead for Meyer. He's trying to settle a bouncy puck, comes to Banks. Can he pull the trigger though? He cannot, and Liebernight able to steal it away from the Aggies. Lost the zone though as he gets tied up with number 44, Geyer. And here come the Aots again. Meyer looking to put the Utes in front here. Sends it in front. Owen Liebernight with a shot. It's blocked by Weiss. And the Aggies clear the zone. Under three minutes to go. Looked like Meyer was maybe getting held up just a little bit on that play, but. No icing here. <coughs> Aggies looking for the stretch pass. Has McKechnie beh or Machunis behind the play. Stolen away by Utah. Now Cutshaw and Light get together. They're holding each other. Refs are letting them play through this last yeah. uh, couple minutes here. Yeah, after all the penalties we saw in the second in the beginning of this period, we have not seen one since. A lot of stick calls that should have been called in this period. And that's offside, mm -hmm. light just a little bit ahead of the play. And you can see the Aggies are, are kind of switching it up and trying to throw that stretch pass, especially when Cutshaw's out there. They've done it three or four times now, but the Utes stepping up in the neutral zone, and, and obviously that pass hasn't gotten through yet, but. Watch for that as we go on, that stretch pass, trying to get a breakaway here and, uh, and go up. All right, Utah's going to take its time out here with 2.22 remaining here in the third period. So, Ryan, you've got two minutes of change here. You've had most of the momentum here in this period. What needs to go your way if you're Utah? I think if I'm Coach Hurst right now, I'm just telling the guys that they got to push. Um, you know, I know Reese brought it up. They're playing with just four D-men right now. They have to be tired. It looks like they're holding on to sticks, holding on to bodies as much as you can. And a lot of those kinds of things happen pretty naturally when you're tired. You know, if you're caught on a long shift or just after playing this game for, you know, the better part of, of 50 minutes here, 
it's just tough to hang in there for for um, that long against a good Utah team. That's for the most part they've they've controlled possession. Of course, that that second period was all Utah State. Um, so I think both teams have a have an equal chance here of you know having someone on on, uh, on the bench become a hero tonight. You know and. We've seen some great games with Utah State over the years. You know, a couple of Wasatch Cup victories for Utah, um, including some that went into a, a shootout. Um, yeah, over, overall, right now, I mean, if I'm if I'm the Utah, I, I think what you've done in this period has been has been pretty good, and you just want to keep that up and, and just try to drive these guys into the ground here. So here we go. Two twenty-two remains in this contest, tied at four. Aggies able to win that draw. And Lallier sends it all the way into the Utah end. Good play from him. As the Utes look to break the puck out. Near side for Light. Has the speed. He uses it. Gets by Kirkville. Walks into the zone. Poked away, though. Right to Lallier. Brings it into the zone. He'll chip it hard into the far corner. First one there is O'Brien. Plays it down low. Picked up by Barnes. Under two minutes now to go. Barnes just escorting that puck out. It's Kirk Felique will send it in. Aggies chain. It's good neutral zone defense there by Utah State. Basically just taking all the real estate away from Barnes and getting a good turnover and getting a change out of it. Big hit from Chris Cutshaw on Wyatt Light. They still battle for it. Now Meyer's got it. Meyer, nifty little move, but lost the handle to the corner. Brings it to the top of the point. Nice pass finds Light. 120 to go. Floated pass. Meyer keeps it on side. Fires a shot off of a pad. Down low to Banks. Banks looking for Meany down low. Odlin will keep it in for Utah. Fires a shot. Blocked. Comes right back to him out of the zone. Puck goes off of McChunis. Back to Utah State. And they're going to call off side on Utah here. And everyone on Utah touched up there. It was just... The timing play where you see if the, if the foot maybe is on the blue line, if he lifts the foot, it's one of those things where the ref has a tough, you know, tough call. So final minute three, 63 seconds all that's left between us and overtime here. It's been a long time since the Utes and the Aggies have had to play bonus hockey and it. Aggie fans don't like to remember that game. As we may mention that here in the intermission if we get one, 50 th seconds left. Top of the point, ball, fires a shot. Casper turns it aside. Aggies with their biggest offensive pressure here in the third period, trying to cycle in the corner. It's picked off by Utah. Banks, Lollier in hot pursuit. Banks will bring it ahead, gives it a lever night. 30 seconds remaining. Gets upended at the blue line, no call. As we play on, Banks sends it in front. Ball sends it right back out. Lieber Knight, nifty spin move with a wow. backhand. And it's turned aside by Weiss. I thought the spinorama was going to do it. 15 seconds left. Comes back to Lieber Knight again. Threw a couple stick checks. Fires a backhand. It's blocked in front. Top of the point, Odlin. Loose on the far side. Banks tries to hack at it. Comes back out to center ice. And that'll be it for 60 minutes here at the Utah Ice Sheet. One second remains. And the horn sounds. 60 minutes, not enough tonight here in Salt Lake City. We're going to overtime here between the Utes and the Aggies. What a great job making that last 15 seconds. Pretty dang interesting there by the Utes offense. Really thought maybe they would get one right there. Overtime hockey. It's, uh, we're playing three on three. We're playing three on, this is division one rules here at the Utah Ice Sheet. So three on three for five minutes. If no goal is scored, we'll play a shootout. Look to decide for, this winner. Look for Wyatt Light in this. This is uh, there's a lot of three on three practiced in uh, throughout the last few weeks just to warm up in case you know in case this this opportunity came, and a, a lot of the faster guys on Utah should look to take advantage of this, and you'll uh, you'll see. I mean, there's a lot. There's going to be a lot of speed, a lot of good plays. Three on three is a very puck possession game. Um, it's it's it'll be good. It'll be fun. And this is what makes this rivalry so great. I mean, just over the years, being in a 4-4 game reminds reminds me of times when I was playing and even before that, that th this rivalry is always tough. Um, no matter the records, no matter the, the divisions, no matter the rosters, uh, a Utah State right now coming off a five-game losing streak. So I know that they're going to want to try to uh, turn their fortunes around tonight. Big goal. 
I think a uh, player, player clearly to watch for on Utah State is Cutshaw with that speed, just making sure he's not getting behind you and they don't complete a stretch pass to leave him all alone with Casper. We know how that turned out the first time. So, And, uh, and watch for, for number 17, Lubin, with that big shot, too, coming in, the big right-handed shot, a lot of weight. Uh, I'd call it a heavy shot, not as much a quick one, but in three-on-three, three, if you can get a heavy shot off, it's, uh, it's effective a lot of the time. So final shots, 40 to 28 through regulation. So the Aggies only put up three shots in that third period. Utah puts up 10 as we head to the overtime period. The first overtime game between these two teams since the 2015 Wasatch Cup, the triple overtime final, where the Utes beat them here in triple overtime. Yeah, and I believe that game ended on a uh, Josh Dangle penalty shot. Yep. Shout out Jay Dangs for bringing home the cup. That was uh, the inaugural Wasatch Cup. Yeah, that was, uh, I was actually on my birthday that Not day. So that it was, was a great birthday, that wasn't it? It was a fantastic <laughs> birthday. So. All right, so here we go. It'll be Decker, Cutshaw, and it looks like McKet uh, excuse me, number 20, that's Chase Ball, will go against Meyer, Jerome, and Light, or excuse me, Meany and Light. Overtime, five minutes yeah. of it, coming up as the Utes win the draw. That comes right in front as Utah will skate it along. A lot of open ice here as we play three on three on Olympic ice. Light gets by one man, walks in. Cutshaw bumps him off the puck. Gives it to Connor Meany. Utes in the offensive zone. Meany gives it to Meyer. Meyer has time. He'll walk in, looks for the short corner. Off the glove of Weiss was going wide anyway, though. Teams tie each other up, picking it up, chase ball. He gets through a couple of stick checks, and he's got open ice. Gives it over to Cutshaw, oh, but it goes off the linesman's skate. Cutshaw looked like he was going to be licensed to go, and it's a two-on-one here for Utah State. Decker with ball. He'll shoot and puts it home. Drew Decker scores for Utah State, and they get the win. Wow, just... A really unfortunate play there. Puck didn't bounce their way. Utah kind of got stuck and uh, just an absolutely brutal way to lose to your rival. Congratulations, uh, you know, of course, to to the Utah State Aggies tonight. You know, they certainly deserve the win. They came out and just flat out outplayed the Utes for, for a good portion of the game. And a little bit of classlessness there from Decker, selling and pointing at the Utah bench after he scored a goal. And... Uh, you know, that's just, that's just not something you like to see. Obviously, you're fired up. There's a lot of emotions, but taunting the other bench is, uh, is not okay. Pretty rough way for the Utes to, uh, to end the semester tonight. Uh, you know, there's going to be a good amount of time to, uh, to put this one behind them, and uh, we'll just start moving on from there and, and, and work their way to uh, hopefully a uh, Nationals invite later on this March in uh, Dallas. Say, but the good news for Utah is it won't hurt their rankings. It's a Division II game, so it will not count towards their computer rankings. But it is a, a singing loss tonight for Utah, a 5-4 overtime loss. Utah State snaps a five-game losing streak. Their semester's not done yet. They'll head back up for one more game next weekend up in Logan. But U uh, Utah now moves to 8-8 eight and eight on the season, 8-7-0-1 oh, if you want to be more more particular, the Aggies 8-9-0-1 oh, themselves after this contest. Final thoughts before we sign off here, guys? Uh, yeah, just reflecting back on a pretty fun first half of the year. Uh, I mean, some really, really good standout uh, rookie players joining this team. That's going to be great for building the future of this program. I'm excited to see how they bounce back. Hopefully we get some of these injured guys back out on the ice, get that depth back up, you know, make sure everybody's taking reps in practice, and then just overall, I mean, there, there's been some pretty high moments. There's been some lows like tonight, but, you know, big wins against Minot State, UNLV. Um, overall, having a winning record against your rivals right now, the in-state teams, you always want to try to have that going for you. So there's plenty to be happy about. There's plenty to be sour about. But I think uh, some positive energy moving forward. The Utes are going to have a great second half of the year. Yeah, I think, I think a lot of those injured guys will be back after the break for sure. Uh, you'll expect Joey D. Benedetto coming back. Uh, Austin Toutfest for sure, um, probably Zach Courier as well. Um, 
you know, maybe even myself. I might be back after break. Who knows? So, <laughs> hey, I mean, uh, after after uh, watching that performance tonight, I'd definitely be wanting to lace him back up. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, uh, we'll see. We'll see. It's it's been a good first half of the season. There's uh, obviously, like you said, a lot of highs. You know, a lot of lows, but a lot to build on. Those those big wins with a full lineup are something that you can look back on and say, hey, we got all our guys. You know, we're we're looking good as a. Uh, as a Utah Utes team and, and the Aggies there, you know, going into going into Christmas, obviously they got a couple more games, but stab a five game losing streak, got some momentum and uh, you know, a, a good turn of events for them for sure. Yeah, and I just wanted to say, uh, you know, shout out to all the people that tune into these broadcasts. You know, we really appreciate your support going on and hope that uh, you'll join us for the second half, Matt. All right, so the Utes are off for Christmas. This will be the last game of 2018. They won't be back until January 11th. They'll go up north to Ogden to take on Weber State. And uh, let's see, looking at us on the January calendar, they'll be in UNLV in Vegas the following weekend and then go to Tucson to take on Arizona to round out the Arizona or the month of January. So a busy Division I plate for them when they come back for the second semester. Still a lot of hope for this Utah squad, as Reese mentioned hopefully getting a couple of guys back from injury and they make that late playoff push trying to punch their ticket to Dallas come the end of March. That's going to do it for us here tonight. We want to thank each and every one of you guys for joining us tonight. For, for Ryan Jones, Reese Jensen, I'm Matt Coma signing off from Salt Lake City. The Utah State Aggies snap a five-game losing streak as they beat the Utes 5-4 in overtime here at the Utah Ice Sheet. For everybody here with Utah Hockey, have a great rest of your evening and a happy holidays as well. We'll see you in the new year. You've been watching the University of Utah take on Utah State right here on YouTube. We'll see you in 2019. Have a great rest of your weekend.